Happy Turkey Day from Tempe, Arizona. We got a fat, juicy college football feast cooked up for you because in year one, under Dennis Erickson, the Sun Devils control their destiny for the Rose Bowl as her nemesis comes in tonight. Pasadena is in sight, but is tonight the night to finally take down the Trojans? We'll find out. Sparky's Pitchfork says a mouthful. Happy Turkey Day from Tempe, the first ever Thanksgiving game here at Arizona State. College Football Primetime presented by Applebee's in a very significant game as USC number 11 in the, B in the BCS takes on number 6 Arizona State leaders of the Pac-10. Sun Devils got some help with Oregon lost a week ago tonight. Now they sit atop the standings and if they can beat USC and the Wildcats a week from Saturday here at home, they'll be passing the bound for the first time in a decade, but USC very much in the hunt. They need a couple of wins and a loss by Oregon. The Sun Devils are one of six contenders for the national championship. They've gotten help by losses for the Ducks and the Sooners. They know that Kansas or Missouri will lose on Saturday, and the Sun Devils think with two more wins, they very much belong in the conversation for the BCS. Well, happy Thanksgiving, Chris Fowler, Doug Flutie, and Craig James. Hope you had a great holiday so far, wherever you are with your families. From our family here, we hope you got some appetite for some more football, because this one is a little bit more significant than the games you've been watching this afternoon. It means a whole lot for both teams. For USC, in fact, it means the continuation of everything. Five straight BCS Bowl games, five straight years winning or sharing the Pac-10, five straight 11-win seasons, top four finishes, all that's on the line. They're used to big games, guys. Arizona State, not so much, not this Group. One guy is, though, Dennis Erickson, the head coach. Now, this is a guy who promises to if you play hard and you stay focused and you work hard, you'll have a chance in November at a big game like this against USC. Because of Erickson's experiences in big games, it's allowed his locker room to relax. This week, going around talking to the players, when you ask them about this game, with a boyish smile, they all grinned, and they were excited about the opportunity to play in a big game like this late in November. I'm not sure they can really believe that they're in a position to perhaps win the Rose Bowl. They haven't beaten USC, though, in seven straight meetings. Meetings, and that's enough motivation by itself, Doug. There are not a lot of you know phenomenal athletes that jump off the field for ASU. They got some weaknesses, but they also have a very solid blueprint for winning games. They're solid top to bottom. Their biggest weakness, biggest flaw has been letting up sacks. They've been sacked 43 times, which is the second worst in the nation. Rudy Carpenter is a fiery leader. He leads his team, but the problem is he holds on the ball a little bit too long sometimes. They gotta run the football, get rid of the ball quickly, go to that quick passing game, protect the football. USC known for its pass, but we'll keep an eye on that tonight. In the meantime, this has been already an amazing journey for Arizona State, fighting from behind again and again and again. And with more on that, we go to the field and Aaron Andrews. Happy Turkey Day, Aaron. Thanks, Chris. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Well, we heard it all day yesterday from Arizona State players and coaches. Who would have ever thought the Rose Bowl would be ours for the taking? Senior Center Mike Pollock said to us, you know, after finishing last year with a 7-6 and six record and having a new coaching staff come in and take over. They felt like their end of the year banquet was almost like a funeral and they worried as seniors they would have nothing to play for. But as you mentioned, this is the biggest game for these players, the biggest game for the city, the program and even the Valley. Even head coach Dennis Erickson told us he's had a chance to be a part of a lot of games, but he says he has never coached in the Rose Bowl and he would love to see what it's all about. They feed off Erickson's aura and his confidence. They'll need all that tonight if they're going to take down the Trojans, USC and ASU from Tempe both sides talking turkey tonight. All right, here we got your ASU turkey. Very succinct, juicy, ready to go. Sandwiches during the week and everything else. What makes this turkey better than USC? Because it don't taste like chicken. It's on us tonight. That's our house tonight. I'll give it back after the game. I'll give you the keys back after the game. But right now, it's our house. ESPN College Football Prime Time. Brought you by Jackley's Beef Jerky, Feed Your Wild Side, and Keystone Light. You can't always be smooth, but your beer should be. Because this is Thanksgiving and you're going to enjoy yourself. Enjoy the turkey and enjoy us making you our turkey. So enjoy the ball game, fellas. Thank you for coming to the University of Southern California. <laughs>
watching ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Remington. Now the Wild West is one. Well, partner, sometimes you need a helping hand from a surprising source. Mike Thomas looking down the sidelines. Diving for the end zone. Touchdown. Pressure intercepted. So he takes it the other way. Pacer gets the corner. Cruise into the end zone. Down with the Ducks in Tucson, and now in the Valley of the Sun, Arizona State can circle the wagons and control its destiny for a trip to Pasadena. Standing in their way, the reigning dynasty, riding in on the white horse. Five-time defending Pac-10 champion USC, chasing roses and more glory in the coming weeks. Steady on your draw. Mount up. The duel in the desert. USC versus ASU on Thanksgiving. Now, Sun Devil Stadium sold out as USC visits Arizona State. Great to be back in the Pac-10 for a second consecutive Thursday. It was Oregon's loss down in Tucson, which opened the door for ASU. And the Sun Devils have control of their destiny now in the Rose Bowl race. Arizona State won the toss, deferred, so USC will get the football, and Thomas Weber boots it deep to Ronald Johnson. Some hesitation, and now the freshman brings it out and breaks a tackle. And Johnson, the speedster, across midfield or near it. And after a shaky start to that kickoff return, the Trojans will have great field position, 49 yards for the youngster. Well, that youngster is a freshman, and it's a big game. Here we are on Turkey Day. And so what happens when he doesn't come out, Johnson really put doubt in the coverage team, Doug, and they didn't. They broke down and missed up their lane assignments. Always a hesitation when that happens on both ends of the bargain, out of their lanes, and Boomy breaks a big one. We expect to see some big plays out of Johnson today. It wasn't necessarily expected in the special teams. Arizona State gave a pickoff return for a touchdown to UCLA last game. Survived that. So, John David Booty brings out the Trojans. Chauncey Washington is the tailback. They fake it to him. And Booty rolls out, has time and room, and now fires it short, complete. And it's Joe McKnight for a short game. So, John David Booty has that broken middle finger that has plagued his senior season. It's not quite 100%. We we'll keep a close eye on it tonight, but certainly good enough to play and that's a relief to his offensive teammates. Well talking with the coaches they seem to think he's had his best couple of weeks of practice. He's throwing the ball much better much more efficient with the ball. They up six and the first down catch by McKnight. This is Washington picking his way inside the 40 for a first down and Introducing us to the USC offense, a former Trojan great in golf, Greg Stanley. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and especially those men and women serving the armed forces overseas. The offensive line has been banged up all season, but Drew Radovich and Jeff Byers have provided stability. John David Booty's favorite target is Fred Davis, and Chauncey Washington, as we all know, has scored eight touchdowns on the ground this year. Thank the Walrus, part of a great golf tradition at USC. Birdie on first down, puts it in the flat to Washington. It breaks the tackle. John C. Washington, a physical run inside the 30, driven out by Josh Barrett. And the former Sun Devil great quarterback, Danny White, sets the ASU defense. Thanks, Chris. This ASU defense brings a lot of pressure with Dexter Davis and Luis Vasquez at defensive ends. And Robert James leads the team in tackles. And in the secondary, Josh Barrett and Troy Nolan, who leads the team in interceptions, are tough to get behind. It's a defense that allows only 18 points a game, but those tend to fall behind early. It's been the pattern all season long, and Booty, once again, a first down throw complete in the flat. The Hazleton, who breaks the tackle, and the Sun Devils not tackling very well in the early going. Right away, you find out that there is a speed difference right now in the game with USC, and it's a game where they'd like to play in space. If you're going to have yards after the catch and big numbers like they're having at USC right now, it'll make it a long night for Arizona State's defense. And because of that, defensively, Arizona State, Arizona State is very basic, simple. They want their players to play as fast as possible, know their assignments, know what they're doing. Moody three for three in the early going. 
Myers, who has played some pretty stout defense in the red zone, but USC, an efficient drive to start this game. Goody will throw again far side. It's complete. Osbury run out of bounds about the 12. So Booty spreading the ball around early. There's just a situation of the corner being off on a run play. Booty comes out under center, fires it out there to his big receiver, six foot four. You, you know what's hard about this? If you're a defensive coordinator trying to figure out USC's offense right now, this is not the same USC offense that we've seen in the past. There's real unpredictable because of all the injuries and the newness that's there. So really you can't figure out what Steve Sarkeesian is going to throw the offensive coordinator at him. Not quite as explosive, not nearly as many big plays from this offense, but a good start. On second down, Booty drops back, fires to Patrick Turner, who makes the catch and sets up for first and goal inside the five. Five different receivers catching Booty's first five completions. I think the variable here is that Booty is throwing the ball with confidence, his fingers out bothering him as much, and they have been a running team lately. They may wind up being a passing team today. Well, that's what they've been. You know, this has been a trademark offense that had the ability to stretch the field and score points in a hurry. It's so Abili the fullback. The freshman Joe McKnight is the tailback. On first and goal, Booty has it. Fires over the middle. Wide open for a touchdown to Vidal Hazelton. What an opening drive for the Trojans. And some concern on the Arizona State sidelines. This has been the pattern. Sun Devils used to falling behind, but what an opener. You know what the real problem here is? Recognition. The right side, on the right side of your field, Hazleton's going to come. You're going to see the linebacker level here trying to play action, and nobody finds him passes off Hazleton. They play like a picket fence down by the goal line, Arizona State. In their red zone defense, they play a picket fence on the goal line, and the hard play action just sucks everybody up. David Bueller adds the conversion. John David Booty, 6 of 6 of the opening drive, 7-0 Trojans. This game being broadcast on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro. Enormously significant game for Arizona State, but USC, which is won or shared the Pac-10 title the last five years, landing a big blow as they march down the field in a minute 47, 51 yards, all set up by the kickoff return from Ronald Johnson. Seven plays, six of them passes as Moody spreads the ball around, and now the first possession for Arizona State, a team that has been falling behind and then rallying all season long. Mueller kicks it off, and this is Rudy Burgess at the two. Burgess in space. Beats the kicker. Rudy Burgess. For a touchdown. <laughs> Blow answered by another 98 yards for a touchdown for the dangerous multi purpose threat Rudy Burgess. He almost let a kicker run him did, down. Did you see that, Craig? He bought a couple of yards of real estate on the sideline to save embarrassment. Oh my goodness, he needs to go into the now. They want to review this play now. This is the same officiating crew that officiated the ASU Cal game a couple weeks ago. I'm told they were methodical. They like to look at things in replay. They the just want to get it right. Can you imagine if Burgess had been run down by David Bueller, oh. the kicker? I, well, if he steps out of bounds here, the punishment will be the same as if he did get tackled. <laughs> but you know what? You ask the question. Everybody's asking the question, how do you start fast? Arizona State always starting slow, just like you said there. Well, this is how you answer that. Come out and make a big play on the special teams. See, nothing there like Yeah, that looked good to me. What a huge play for Arizona State. Here's a closer look. Did that foot catch the sideline? No nope. referee right there. Doesn't see anything. I think this one's going to stand. <laughs> and Burgess has saved the embarrassment of being watch, denied a touchdown by a kicker. Watch the gap close. Watch the... The 
Trojan said, you got Arias number three as a receiver and a runner when ASU hands the ball. They didn't mention as a returner, but Erickson's special teams, which haven't been great this season, providing a spark. And now Thomas Weber is one of the three finalists for the Lou Groves Award as the kicker of the year. Ties the game at seven. So two touchdowns in the first 2 2 on Turkey Day. You think the pressure that he that he took off the backs of his teammates is being unbelievable? Because Absolutely. those guys are sitting there. Look at the wall now. This is how you see it. These guys come together, have your vision, stretch it to where the return's supposed to be, and then you have lean assignment breakdown, and then run open space. One great cut, and then just run. And boy, that's embarrassing for for a speed guy. He he outran him. I will say this. He outran him. He didn't get the tackle. Run, forced run. Run, force. <laughs> Sharice Wright was number 24, also chasing him. There's Rudy Carpenter. Had the helmet on, ready for the offense. You know what? I'll take your seat for a while. Touch what? down the, the easy way. And Craig said it. It takes the pressure off this team. They've got that reputation, and they have this year of get behind early. USC made it look easy. We got a full moon. Almost. A we're full gonna moon. have. You tell us right now. We're gonna have. We're gonna have some serious points tonight. That's it. Yeah, we were. Good start. All I heard was people talk. I don't know if I want to say what I was potentially thinking, but a lot of people talk about well, low we, score. We would love, Doug, to hear what's in between those nuggets up there. Absolutely. Uh, you will by the end of the night. I can't wait. Remember to kick it off, and this is Johnson, the freshman again, who had the big return a couple minutes ago. Breaks another tackle, gets out near the 30. What, what's with the return out to the 30 stuff? Let's get it. Midfield, or better. Well, now you got to get this Arizona State defense. They have got to make the adjustments. Six, like you said, Chris, six passes on that opening drive. Probably took them by a little bit of surprise there. Well, in the last game against Cal, USC was a run team. Booty was efficient. Only completed 11 passes in that game, and they relied on the big running of Chauncey Washington. Tonight, obviously, the game plan is Steve Sarkeesian throw early. And the Sun Devils were on their heels. First down, it's the tight end, Davis, in motion. Booty on play action, flips it short. And Davis has blockers and has room. And the leading receiver in the Trojans rumbles to the 45. Josh Barrett finally driving him out. you got to have responsibility, and you have to be disciplined on defense. Arizona State, backside, Dexter Davis. Watch how hard he comes in with the play action. Excuse me, the other side, right side of your screen, the way he comes in. Davis just blows his gap response. Look at this lane here. Nobody's outside. Because of the coverage makeup for Arizona State, Davis should have a big game today. 45th catch on the year for a tight end who leads his team, not just in receptions, but also receiving yards by a big margin. That's unusual. Washington, short game. Arizona State normally does not want to put a nickel back, a safety on a tight end, but Davis is such an athletic, dangerous player that Craig Bay Bray's going to have to kind of adjust his plan tonight a little bit. Well, they play what everyone calls quarters coverage, and what happens is once he gets past 10 to 12 yards up the field, he will be picked up by a safety. Once he gets past linebacker level, there will be a safety responsible. Basically, layman's words, they got two guys to help on the deep guy, right? Now the tight end, Davis, is a high school running back, and he has... Great skill. Booty over the middle. Incomplete. Patrick Turner, ball thrown behind him. First third down for USC. The former USC great Matt Leiter, of course. Cardinals, along with his teammate Larry Fitzgerald, the ex Pitt Panther great Matt Leiter, one of what, six Eisman Trophy winners in the house tonight, Doug? It's so you can have a little club <laughs> sub again. Marcus Allard is sitting next to Charles Barkley. We were down there with Gina Toretto, Toretto a little while ago. Mike Garrett, of course, the athletic director for USC, is here. On third and nine. It's McKnight in the backfield. Booty straight back. There's good protection. Fires complete to McKnight, who breaks a couple of tackles and has a first down. For the true freshman, 
slippery receiver and a very explosive runner, a big future for number four. And USC picks up 11 yards in the first down. And I think really this is the, the added element, the dimension that he gives you. This offense really thrives on the underneath passing game and yards after catch between the Davis, the tight end, McKnight out of the backfield. Yeah, Pete Carroll told us on third down, McKnight has finally understood that if he runs disciplined patterns, he's going to make big plays on third down. Erickson's defense needs to start tackling better, wouldn't you say? Yeah, they do. Booty, pump fake on first down. Fires all over the middle. Incomplete. Ronald Johnson, the freshman well covered there. Troy Nolan. Booty kind of had his mind made up what he wanted to do. He wanted to pump one way and go the other right away. At least he had his mind made up on that play. The play before, he wasn't quite sure where he was headed on this thing. You know, left guard can't snap the ball, coach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> when a guard has to wave you over, you know you're discombobulated. Huh? Mr. Spanos is the center. Avili and Washington in the backfield. And so Avili in motions across. And blocks for Washington. Gets very little on the right side. Michael Marquardt on the tackle. Now, let me ask you this here. you got Rudy Carpenter, a little nicked up thumb. He's on the sideline, hasn't had a chance to get out there and get lathered up yet. What do you do over there? You, you really do want to get on the field. You want to get out there, get hit the first time, get the juices flowing, and you're cooling down. I mean, you'll take your kickoff return for a touchdown, but you want to get out there and keep that sweat going that you built up in pregame. Another opportunity for the Sun Devil defense on third down. They're a very good defense, allowing just 28% conversions on the season. Trojans just picked up the third and nine. This is third and eight. Rudy fires on the slant. Complete. And near first down yardage is Turner. He won't have quite enough. About a yard and a half short at the 25. That's Josh Barrett, the safety in pain. Tosses the helmet aside. ASU thin on defense. And this guy, Barrett, playing because Jeremy Payton, the normal starting free safety, has a gimpy ankle. Well, tomorrow night, Colt Brennan in Hawaii tries to stay undefeated. They had a narrow escape at Nevada. Now they're at home against Boise State. It is the whack game of the season, part of Rival Week, presented by Remington. Friday night, 9 o'clock Eastern time. What do you like in that game? Yeah, I, I, Boise uh, State's playing well, and this is a this is a challenge here. Hawaii is a good team. This is a real measuring stick. It's going to give the country a chance to figure out whether or not Hawaii can handle a team 10 and one record. Well, we saw Boise early in the season, and they looked good tonight. We had them, and Hawaii they've still got a lot riding on this. Uh, Colts been amazing all year long. Scrappy, they've gotten away with two overtime wins, and they've been doing whatever it takes to win games. Sometimes it doesn't look pretty. Barrett is helped off as USC will accept a field goal with David Bueller, who beyond 40 is only one of two this year. This from 42 yards. Bueller? Anybody? Bueller. He's got it. <laughs> Bueller? Bueller? Two drives for I, SC, producing 10 points. That's a Ferris Bueller reference. I know, but I didn't let anybody park my car tonight. <laughs> Carpenter gets his chance coming up. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. Together is good. And in part by Clean Exchange, the only electric shaver with a disposable head. Clean Exchange, new from Remington. And ESPN Game Plan. On Saturday, catch two great matchups, Oregon at UCLA and Georgia at Georgia Tech. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. A lot riding on this duel in the desert tonight. USC needs an Oregon loss and a couple of wins to get to the Rose Bowl. Arizona State controls its destiny despite the loss up in Eugene. Thanks to Oregon's loss to Arizona. So, another kickoff, and this is Burgess, who had just the second home kickoff return for a touchdown in 21 years for Arizona State. Took the first one 98 yards. 
takes this one to the 27-yard line. Arizona State offense on the field for the first time after we check back with Reese Davis for a 30 and 30 update. Well, Chris, the hors d'oeuvres for our main event tonight between the Trojans and Sun Devils came from the NFL. Cowboys beat up on the Jets 34-3. Tony Romo to T.O. Cowboys are 10 and 1 for the first time. They've got the Packers coming up next. And on the subject of the Packers, Brett Favre completed a team record 20 consecutive passes as they beat the Lions 37 to 26. Sports Center after the game, stay current with ESPN News. Chris, thank you. Ian Herring is the back, but Carpenter has the ball on first down, flips it incomplete. Trying to get the ball to Miller to tie in, and Danny White, the former Sun Devil quarterback, back for the offense. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This group has four seniors up front, creating daylight in the running game and protecting Rudy Carpenter in the pocket. And this group of receivers and running backs, without a big name, they can score points on anyone. And there's a new commitment now to the running game. Danny White played on Thanksgiving a lot when he was with the Dallas Cowboys. So Carpenter, short incompletion on first down, sets up second and ten. Keegan Herring is the tailback. Carpenter wants to take a shot downfield, loops it. Incomplete. Michael Jones, their big play threat, just over his head. And Keyshawn Johnson with the Trojan defense. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This is USC's defense, one of the best in the country. Lawrence Jackson and Cedric Ellis anchor the defensive line. Linebacker Keith Rivers leads the team in tackles. And I wouldn't want to go across the middle of the field with this secondary. Vicious safety. Kevin Ellison and Terrell Thomas. Fight on. Thank you, Keisha. Now in third and ten, we may see the first look at that USC pass rush against an offensive line that's given up 43 sacks. Carpenter flushed, fires wide, incomplete. Well covered to the sideline was Chris McGahan, and ASU goes three and out on the first possession. A lot of these sacks are, are just coverage sacks, and some are where they, the quarterback's holding the ball too long. But the problem that Arizona State's having, 80% to 90% of the, of the downs, if they snap the ball, they have blitzes coming their way. So everybody's just unloading the kitchen after. When you see an opportunity, you go after it. That's what defenses do. A lot of their sacks have come on those third down and long plays, third down plays in general. Thomas Weber, the kicker, took over the punting duties in recent weeks and did a pretty good job. This one off the side of his foot, ugly looking kick, bounces just across midfield and will be down at the 46. So excellent field position for USC, back out there up by a field goal. And well, Saturday, bitter rivals collide on ESPN2, a very significant collision between the Hokies and the Cavaliers, high noon Eastern time in Charlottesville. Spot versus Boston College in the ACC that's championship game at stake. That's right. Make those guys play for the honor to go play Boston College. Yeah. Think this guy's eating some some Thanksgiving meals in his life. Oh, He's had a few. I want him as a good tight end, man. No, you know what? I would have loved to have him in a tight end. But he'd have loved to play for you. I guarantee it. Lives down here in the area. Huge and knowledgeable college football fan, I might add. Booty on first down. Complete. Osbury. Knifing quickly into the secondary and down near the 36-yard line. These physical receivers for USC, not easy to bring down, 18 yards. Yeah, you know what, this is, a, this is a trend that's not a good trend. When you're having yards after the catch that are in such big numbers by your offense, defense has got to go get the ball and they've got to get there in a hurry with numbers. I was talking with uh, passing game coordinator Johnny Morton for USC. He said last, last game he got in his face a little bit about run after the catch and just ran over people and the run after the catch is very important. Aggressive play call. You can see Sarkeesian Booty throwing a lot on first down back again. This time he dumps it up short for McKnight. McKnight stutter steps down near the 20. Just ran right around Travis Gaithel, the linebacker. Nice patience on, on Booty's part. Look, wanted to go up the field, came down to McKnight. And a, well, who was that? A, a happy, who, who, was Havili. that? who was that? Man? Havili knocked him on his tail down by the side. He'll do that the young guy there. Right. <laughs> yeah, right now, though, it's, it's pretty obvious, isn't it, guys? I mean, you're seeing some athletes in space right now that are not getting tackled and it's big yards after catch. John David Booty, 11 of 13 in the first six minutes of this game, including a touchdown. It's Davis, the tight end, who motions wide on the flag. It's a false start against the Trojans. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 60 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. 
first penalty is against Drew Radovich. His dad, Mark, played at Arizona State in the 70s. Pete Carroll, just a remarkable record, in particular in the last five years. We'll talk about everything that's riding on this game tonight. That streak of top four finishes, 11 win seasons, at least a piece of the Pac-10 title. I believe I read, and I believe I read he's 22-0 in the month of November. He doesn't lose in the month that you have to win. Lost to give an early December to UCLA last year, however. <laughs> Booty, puff fake. Now comes over the middle and dumps it short. Davis. Brought down inside the 15. Rodney Cox, the safety on the stop. The injury to Barrett makes things very thin in that secondary for the Sun Devils. Davis, Davis is a key receiver for this team. Right? Erickson was talking about him too being a weapon. Dennis against USC, a one and four record. Did get the win in 2000. It was a landmark win for the Oregon State USC. It's Chauncey Washington on second and one. He's got it. And Washington pulling inside the ten. It'll be first and goal. Rodney Cox on the stop. 220-pound senior out of Torrance, California. Coming off the career game. Washington had the biggest game for a USC tailback since Reggie Bush ran wild in 2005 against the Bruins last week. 220. And they've needed this. They've had a, they've had kind of a, a running back by committee yep. this season. And so for Washington to step up at this point in the season, they got 78, big Sam Baker on the left, 79, Baker on the left side, that big old tackle over there back in the game, and they needed him to get this running game going. Play action on first down, Booty to the end zone, over the head of Turner. Well covered by Justin Tryon, the best cover corner for ASU. Yeah, Sarkeesian said that Washington was a war daddy in that, that clinching drive against Cal, 69 yards in that drive alone. Well, he's been the most consistent guy. He's the guy that they rely on where everybody looks at McKnight's athleticism and the big play. And, but you, you want the guy that's going to be in the right place at the right time, do all those little things it takes to, to make this offense move. So this is the guy who said no to the LA Raiders. Bunch formation on the right. Those guys are blockers for McKnight. And the hammers down near the five. An excellent job by Dexter Davis out there on the edge. Worked out by the linebacker John Hargis on the stop. Now, Davis is a fast, athletic guy. This defense is athletic. And right now they're really kind of setting their pads, and I think they're recognizing the speed and appreciating the speed and the athleticism in the open field. Catching up to the speed of the game. They don't look very athletic compared to USC right now. <laughs> They play a third and goal. Washington is the setback. Havili, the fullback's in the slot. And they throw it to him. And Big Stanley reaches for the end zone. Touchdown. Well, you know how I am about reaching with the ball for the goal line and all that? You don't like it? Well, I don't like it. But here, I think he actually needed to to reach the goal line. He wasn't going to get it. Great catch by a fullback. He's got great hands. Avili, a guy, got off to a great start. USC's first play of the game against Nebraska. Remember, he busted out there 50 yards. They were pinned back. He struggled in the last couple of weeks, guys. They say the freshman is kind of mentally worn down, but a big high school season's over. High school season's over. Season's over. He's having to figure out you got to play a little bit longer. No surprise, Arizona State in a 10-point hole. Not an unfamiliar position for them, but, boy, USC off to a great start for Pete Carroll. Sun Devils down 10. USC's had good field position on two of their three possessions. Two touchdowns and a field goal. 17-7. As ASU set to get the ball back just midway through the first quarter. Part of the star set at scene down there on the sidelines. The former Phoenix Sun great Sir Charles Barkley will join us in a second here. USC dealer set to kick it off. There's Burgess who took the first kickoff of the night for ASU. 98 yards for a touchdown. Some more good field position. Burgess at the seven. And brought down at the 27. 
Sun Devils three and out in their first offensive possession. Charles, welcome. Happy Thanksgiving to you. I can assume you had a nice meal already. Now you come out and watch a football game at night. What's going on? Well, I came out to support my Arizona State Sun Devils. It's been a great day and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Well, and a couple guys up here who wonder what, what kind of a football player you would like to be, Charles. Doug wants to make yeah, that I would have loved to have you a tight end. You ever try it? I probably tried it one day, Dougie. It was a little too physical for me. <laughs> oh, come, come on. Man. I'm not joking. I played football one day in my life. They were knocking the hell out of me out there. <laughs> one day and done. <laughs> <laughs> on first down, the first running play of the night. This is Keegan Herring. Picks up about six. Charles, what is it that you love about the sport of football? I know you're a, you're a huge fan. We've seen you along the trail of college football games. I think that football and boxing are my two favorite sports for the simple fact you got to have great heart to be out there. You can't be, I mean, you got to be a real man to play football or box. And those are my two favorite sports by far. Charles, you also have to have real experience in big games. USC, they're in use to this deal. Do you sense maybe Arizona State's trying to get used to the bigness of the game? Well, I think the main thing, USC came right out of March, right down the field, trying to set an example right off the bat. They don't want to play from behind and get this crowd in the game. That first round was really huge for them. It's Dimitri Nance catching the dump-off pass and getting a first down out to the 35. And these Arizona State students, Charles, you've watched this team all season long. They have amazing calm and composure when they get behind. Time after time, they've come from double-digit deficits. Yeah, but that won't work tonight. <laughs> this, this is a different animal. I was just talking. I'm here as a guest to Marcus Allen. I said, we've been great in the second half. But let me tell you something. I said, he, he agreed. This is a different animal. They can't get too far down on this team. But this is the best team they played all year. Herring, short loss. Now, the really important game from, from your perspective, Charles, this weekend, Auburn and Alabama. Here come the Crimson Tide stumbling in off the loss of Louisiana Monroe. And all of a sudden, Nick Saban under a little bit of fire. How do you see that one playing out? Well, I think they've been a little bit unfair to Coach Saban. He's going to get the job turned around there, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's the biggest game in my life. And if we lose this game, it's going to ruin our entire season. You got two Wii's working here. You got Arizona State Wii. You got Auburn Wii. Well, 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 I'm putting up in Arizona State because I live here. I'm actually an Arizona fan because my daughter goes to U of A, but my heart is with Auburn always. Absolutely. Not much for Herring on the left side, but you, you're, you're telling us in the break, you're not taking this one for granted. You know Alabama is dangerous despite a couple of losses that have shocked their fans. Well, but that's, that's, that's the only way they can save their season, beating Auburn. Obviously, I think Auburn's got a better team, but when you're down as low as Alabama is, they got nothing to lose. So this is a must a win for us to save our season because we lose this game it'll ruin our season also hey charles last time i was with you we were in new orleans having a nice little evening and i hear that if auburn wins this game you're gonna throw a party of all parties i'm gonna throw a party of all parties if we beat alabama because it's starting to get redundant we've been beating them so much lately the push in McGahan. He's inside the USC 40 yard line. A conversion on third and 10. Picks up 21 yards. <laughs> well, we want to come to that party, Sir Charles, when you have it. I tell you. But hey, this is the kind of deal that the offense has to do. They have to make some plays. McGahan is one of those dependable, short range receivers. Not a big play guy, but in this particular part of the football game, critical that they have first downs. And watching him on film, he's quick in and out of his cuts. Great hands, makes those tough catches. 42nd catch of the season. Again, he still wants to find the end zone for the first time. That's a lot of catches for a guy who doesn't yet have a touchdown. <laughs> and 33 of those 41 receptions were for first, first downs. So 80% of the time that he catches the ball, it's moving the chains as he did right there. Hey, Charles, I want to ask you about uh, your selection of the week. You're a guy who likes to make uh, lots of predictions, and you back up those predictions. What, what is your selection <laughs> for this big rivalry Saturday? <laughs> Well, obviously, I've, you know, I'm going with Auburn. I think, it'll be, like I said, it'll be disastrous if we lose. Okay. Uh, but that's the only game I'm concentrating on after tonight. Really? <laughs> Yo, that's, that's, a, that's unusual for you. There's only one game this weekend. That's only one game. You don't understand. We got nothing to do in Alabama. <laughs> it's that root for Alabama-Auburn. And it's the biggest thing in our lives down there. Hey, hey, let me ask you this question. I know you're a big college football fan. At the end of the season, Arizona State, they went out. And they have a shot at playing for the national championship. They do not. It's probably going to come down. If Kansas or Missouri, why, not? Game, why, why shouldn't they belong in that conversation if they only have one loss at the end of the year? Well, 
you know, everybody's got to be complaining about the Missouri Kansas weather if they can beat Oklahoma, whoever they play in the Big 12 championship game. And then you got West Virginia. So I don't think both of those teams are going to lose. Right now it's going to be the winner of that game if they can beat Oklahoma or West Virginia. After the timeout on the first down, again, not much doing for Herring as the Sun Devil running game, which produces 165 yards per game this season. Tough going early. Talked about the six teams. It's down to six in the national championship chase, thanks to losses last week by Oregon and Oklahoma. That really helped Arizona State on a couple of fronts. And Charles mentioned either the Jayhawks or the Tigers are going to drop out of there. And then the debate begins. Where does ASU stack up with Ohio State and West Virginia? They got a big game against UConn as well. Yeah, that Big 12 champion versus a potential of LSU if they run it out. All right. You don't think Sun Devils belong in the conversation, huh? Carpenter sack for the first time tonight. Cedric Ellis, the tackle got him. He's got eight and a half on the year. He's got the Achilles heel, but a flag is down. Eleven-yard loss on the play, but an unsportsmanlike conduct against USC after the play. Ellis beating Paul Fanica, the guard there. He's a beast in the middle, isn't he? Number 49. <laughs> and, and you know what? You saw Dennis Erickson fired up about, you mentioned one name getting beat. They do not want to have any one individual ever responsible for Ellis. He's that quick and powerful. After the play, on sports for light conduct. Number 49 on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Third down. Pete Carroll was saying, we love when this guy gets one-on-one. -on -one. That's what we're looking for. Here's the reaction. They flagged that? No, uh, that's not much. Now, you know what, though? Hey, in college football, when you get individual in celebration, it's coming. Have Charles, you like that call? You think that's a good call? That's a terrible call. <laughs> you got to have some emotion. You know, we complain when players don't play with passion. That wasn't excessive. Sometimes it is excessive, but that wasn't a good call right there. That's from the guy who wants ASU to win the game. Telling it like it is. And third and six, Carpenter. And to buy some time, fires far sidelines. It's Begehe with the catch. I think he's short of the marker by about half a yard. And, and there's a great example of how you have time to throw the football, but you have time to throw the ball there because they had backs staying in. Only two options out in the route. And when you're looking left and right, there are only two guys you can go to. It looks right, comes back to Begehe. I love how he felt that the rush slid to his right and, and the quarter was sealed. He just drifted out to his left to make the throw. And they'll go for it on fourth and short from the 30-yard line. Carpenter plows ahead on the sneak and appears to have it. Starting to feel like ASU's getting their feet wet a little bit here, starting to get comfortable with the speed of this game. This is an important drive because the defense hasn't made a stop yet. You know what, though? It's really, it's only their second drive of the game because yeah. they kick off return. And they got the ball with over seven minutes to go in the quarter. And it's almost like a must-score situation because of the way USC is moving the football. Charles, I have to ask you before we let you go, what did you eat for Thanksgiving dinner? Was it, was it monumental or, or modest? It was monumental. <laughs> uh, there's a place here in town to keep me. Uh, that's a great place here called Baby K's. They cooked me two deep-fried turkeys. And I came up with the dresses and everything. Keegan Herring on the swing pass into the secondary. Hammering down in the 10-yard line area as the flag comes down late. Nice block from Brett Miller, the tight end. Now we'll check the flag. <laughs> Monumental Thanksgiving dinner. We'll talk more about fried turkeys. I got educated by my, my partners on it. Fried and turkeys. Face mask penalty against USC be tacked on after the 24 yard gain. Face mask on the defense, number 28. The five half the distance to the goal. First down. Charles, thanks again. You're the best. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Smart. Alabama this weekend, huh? Yeah, he will. But how smart is this, this series that they're going down the field? Rich Olson, offensive coordinator, taking advantage of an aggressive inside pressure, throwing a screen pass. On first and goal, Dimitri Nance. Set seven yards behind Carpenter. Nothing. Billy Moala got there early to 
hold up the ball carrier. You know that iron ball, though. People ask me around the country, what's the greatest game that you can go to? I've seen most all of them, right? I, if right. I had one more game that I had that I knew I could go to, Alabama Auburn would be at the top. He's not lying about that either. He told me that middle of the season is your favorite rivalry game and the one that you want to see. You see, if you have year in year out, regardless of the stakes, it always delivers. Uh, they, I mean, it's real. It is real to them emotionally. I've never been there. Looking forward to it one day. See if the Sun Devils can deliver here on second and goal. Miller in motion. Carpenter fires for the end zone. Touchdown, Michael Jones. Seventh touchdown reception for the junior from Sugarland, Texas. He beat Sharice Wright. First offensive touchdown for ASU tonight. He's normally their big play guy. Averages about 18 yards a catch. That one good for about four. But crucial is Thomas Weber. Makes it a three-point game. So Rudy Carpenter, 0 of 3, pass attempts in the first drive, 5 for 5 the second drive. Yeah, like I see Aaron Andrews walking around behind the bench back there. That's her the let, let's check in with Aaron. She's right down there. Well, I'm just uh, behind ASU's bench here. Rudy Carpenter giving it to his players right now, congratulating him. Obviously a huge drive for them. And, you know, one thing that we talked to Mike Pollock, his center, about yesterday was the fact that a weight has been lifted off of Carpenter's shoulders. Remember last year, all the drama he went through with Sam Keller, Dirk, Now, boys. Uh, he's earned the respect of his teammates, Aaron, because he's taken so many hits. He's playing with that thumb problem, injured it against Cal, re-aggravated it the last game against U UCLA. Even taking a snap hurts, Doug, but he he's toughening it out. You know, he's a fiery, emotional kind of guy, and he is the guy that has carried this team to where they are. I mean, they're going to live and die with Rudy. The 74-yard, 12-play touchdown drive makes it a 17-14 game. The deep kickoff by Weber, and Ronald Johnson will take a knee, and for once, USC won't have great field position. Let's go back to Reese Davis in the studio. Reese. All right, Chris, just like college football this year, a lot of upsets in the early going in college basketball. Villanova and UCF, University of Central Florida on ESPN2 right now. A little over two minutes to go, and it is a, what, three-point game, I believe, right now. At the moment, Villanova and UCF on ESPN2 going right down to the wire, guys. Some crazy upsets in the early part of the college basketball season as well. On first down, the toss to McKnight, who juggles the toss. Jumps in the air and picks up about five. The ball's loose again. It comes out near the sidelines. Was it recovered before it went out of bounds? Looks like the Trojans still have it, despite a bunch of hundred guys in Arizona State uniforms signaling the other way. Right there, did you see the speed of the defense? Did you see the effort to the football? There's a lot more speed and urgency. Maybe Arizona State settles down. That ball just went out of bounds. I'd like to see him review that, though. That looked real close to me. He was leaning out of bounds. If his foot is touching the ground when he grabs it, there's a chance he was in bounds. Mike Nixon, the veteran, the 23-year-old former AAA baseball player, who's a linebacker here, forced that fumble. Mike picked up five. This is Chauncey Washington. Short game. <laughs> Set up a third and about four. We talked to Sir Charles about the Iron Bowl. Nebraska, Colorado is a 10 a.m. Boulder time kickoff on ABC tomorrow. A&M, Texas. Is it for Franchoni? Well, I don't know if it's it for Franchoni or not. The players and everybody are trying to block out that distraction. This is a big game for Texas. It's a game that gives them a chance, if they win, to put pressure on Oklahoma, who then would have to beat Oklahoma State. Presented by Sonic as we see Washington limp off to the bench. Injury is such a huge factor for USC. They lose two players there. That was Radovich, the tackle, who came off as well. Injuries for SC and up and down the Pac-10 conference. Never seen anything with the injury epidemic 
in this conference this season. Third and four for the Trojans, McKnight, the tailback. Booty sacked. That's Dane Guthrie, the former University of Florida transfer with the pressure. And you, you lose one offensive lineman, communication breakdown, right side of the offensive line allows the blitz and the pressure to come clean and free. Right side, watch here. You got a no hitter. You know, you got people who are not doing anything. And when you have that newness out there, he just missed blocks. It's Kyle Williams, the fair catch on the punt from Greg Whitenet. So Arizona State, the defense gets a stop. 50-yard punt. And when we see Washington at the right ankle is a concern. Up and down this league, just a tremendous number of injuries. The Sun Devils lost their top running back, Ryan Terrain. He's a senior. He's going to be ready for you know, the scouts' workouts. Planner fasciitis problem. Dennis Dixon a week ago tonight. Jeremiah Johnson earlier. A couple of receivers for Oregon. Colvin. Pacinger, not even on that list. UCLA decimated a quarterback. Cows had their problems. Incredible. They fake it to Herring, and Carpenter dumps it short. Now it's Herring on the catch. And he picks up about nine. So play action to the tail. Like that he goes out in the pattern. Yeah, you know what? It's This is now an offense that's starting to play, a team that's starting to play. A lot more confidence. Really, maybe the pressure finally lifted off their back. Carpenter did a good job of getting their ball out quickly to the check down with that rush around the corner because he did not have a lot of time there. Nice job getting rid of it. Check Chauncey's leg after a very exciting first quarter in Tempe. 17-14 USC. Beautiful Thanksgiving Day in the Valley of the Sun. Long after the sun's gone down. Nice big moon overhead. 31 point first quarter. Featuring big plays on both sides. And now Arizona State. Comes the ball back down by three. Second and one to start the second quarter. They have not been able to run the ball at all in that interior defensive line of USC. That's Everson Griffin, the true freshman, starting over the injured Kyle Moore tonight on the stop. Yeah, watching film on Herring and running the ball, he's eight yards deep. And as a tailback being eight yards, that really is a problem because the lanes are opening up front. I think he misses them many times. Lane's there, and it's only it's going to close quick. And, and his... You know, coordinator Rich Olson was my running back coach at SMU, and I know he wouldn't let us get eight yards deep. He wanted us at seven so we can get up in it. I think he looks for the cutback a little too quickly here. He could have stayed front side. The play is designed to go to this side, and he's looking for the cutback right away. Yeah, that, that distance, I just, I see film all the time of running backs who are too deep. The lane is there. They miss it, and, and it's because they're too deep. But boy, he's talented. He's got some quick feet to him. He can get 50 yards in a hurry, but tonight, 0 0 0 0 in his four carries. Has caught a couple of passes. Well, he hasn't lost any yards. <laughs> Brandon Rod, the left tackle for ASU. And walking on his own to the sidelines. So, no gain. It's third and one now. Carpenter tries to muscle the sneak in heavy traffic. I think they'll spot it across the 42 for a first down. Got a fun visit with Carpenter yesterday. He was telling the story about his girlfriend, and apparently his girlfriend's dad's a big game hunter. Yeah. <laughs> He's over playing some kind of game with him, and uh, and he says, I was nervous, man. I'm looking at all these animals right now. This dad has no problem shooting things. <laughs> the dad was observant, too. You're going to tell the real detail no, of the story? I, I, can't uh, do that? No. <laughs> <laughs> there was evidence of some hanky panky been going on. <laughs> All I know is he was wearing a high collared shirt. I didn't know that was off limits. <laughs> it used to be. <laughs> well, there is Aaron, very deep in that eight yard formation you don't like, and blocking up the middle there once again is Griffin and Philly Moala. You see, very often Rudy Burgess comes in motion. They're setting it out to try that, that rocket sweep or jet sweep that they've run a few times this year. What they're trying to do is hold the backside contained and make them hesitate and freeze so that 
he cut, uh, Harrington cut it back side. Yeah. And they're closing it down, like Craig pointed out. They close it down on the backside cutback leg. So maybe the reverse will be there. Harrington averages six yards a carry this season. An ugly average so far tonight. Carpenter on second down delivers far side and his possession receiver, McGehee, the sophomore in front of Kerry Harris. Nice ball. You know, the, the hand and the strength of Carpenter. No, no problem there, was it, Doug? Uh, you know, you, you think with a thumb injury, it's tough to control that football. Shoot, my hands were so small I had trouble gripping it anyway. But, I mean, he's throwing the ball fine. He's got that taped up there on the, on the thumb. And you saw their game in Oregon, and some of Carpenter's passes were very wobbly that day at Odson. That was when the injury was fresher. Once again, third down. They need six. It's Dimitri Nance in the backfield. As a blocker, and McGehe, solid and dependable. Into the secondary. Inside the 30, gets a huge run downfield. Thought for a second he might finally find the end zone. Instead, tackled at the 11. That's Rudy Burgess who threw the big block. Let me tell you why McGehe is so dependable. The precision of his route running. And it gives confidence to Rudy Carpenter. I mean, I, this, this here, this obviously, uh, I think he may just be tired. Yeah, tired of the moment. But watch the route. On the right side, you're not going to be able to see it. When he drives off the ball, it's not a vanilla route. He really bought time, went up the field, and then came back to the middle. I mean, yeah. that was just important that he do that and be disciplined in his route. Watch the block here. Burgess. Harris, number seven, you know, gets laid out. 42 <laughs> yards. Because my brother's sitting home saying, possession right, right, receiver up, up and he Mike back. Tail, he's, he's got a 42-yard gain here making a big play. Great job in and out of the breaks. Quick, in and out of his breaks. Sharp cut. Great block by Burgess. Getting everything he can out of the run. Got 42 yards out of it, but again, he's still on one knee. Now, finally, just gets to his feet. And he's helped off. How do you make 42-yard plays have all these catches and not get in the end zone? Uh, yesterday, McGay and a couple of his other teammates were around the hallway. I go, uh, the coach and I, they go, what are you looking for? They go, we're looking for that sideline reporter. <laughs> oh, <okay>. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't worried about the game. Well, he did look a little shaken up there. Now he's walking very slowly off. Rudy Carpenter's at eight passes in a row now, and the Sun Devils have a first down at the USC 11. Looks real sharp throwing the football. I thought with the thumb that, that he might be a little slow with his release, protecting the ball, or holding on to it a hair long. He looks very comfortable throwing the football. So there are some guys with the chart. He and Rich Olson, his offensive coordinator, both on the field, and they worked the game plan together, the play calling together. Nance in the backfield. Miller in motion. On the end around. Williams has to fight to earn about three yards there. And, and you know what? When you talk about those two guys, Olsen and Eric, Trojan say they have the football and it be ASU ball second down. The way they work, Rich Olsen, the coordinator, he works with, with Erickson, and their experiences of being together and seeing things and making adjustments in the game, that's why this team didn't panic playing in such a big game. Olsen was in Miami as the offensive coordinator, struggled there as a lot of offensive coordinators have seemed to do in recent years. <laughs> we broke him down early, though, <laughs> in his career. Yeah. You're telling old stories from the SMU days. <laughs> On second down, it's Miller motioning to the right side of the formation. And barging straight ahead. They're going to continue to try to run the ball up the middle with very little success. So they really have to continue to try to run the football to slow down the pass rush and stay in good down and distance and try to create some makeable third down situations. Second carry for Nance has picked up just two yards. Arizona State at net zero yards. He's checking out the moon. It's a beautiful night tonight. McGehee's back in, be out wide left. Get those uh, binoculars on the field. Big play here, third and seven from the eight. McGehee back in the game. The middle. He had the tight end Miller wide open. USC left. Brett Miller uncovered. Upper didn't see him, and Kevin Allison breaks up that pass. He said, Rudy, look at me, man. <laughs> and it was a pre-snap thing that happened, too, on the play. They ended up with a double on the weak side of the formation. They left the tight end. It was an all-out blitz, so it was man-to-man -man across the field. But two guys were covering one, which left 
the tight end wide open. And a missed opportunity for seven, and now Weber from 25 yards. Kicker who is 19 for 20 in field goals this season. No problem for the Groza finalist. No problem for Arizona State to once again make up that double-digit deficit. Could have had the lead. They settled for three, 17 apiece, early second quarter. Middle of the screen right there, you see it. Ooh. Wide open tight end. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving and welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. We are all tied up at 17 here. And Dennis Erickson was telling us yesterday, you know, when he came to Arizona State, he told his team, look, we've got a plan for you. And if you buy into it, we'll help you win. We can help you do this. And guys, you know, he told us this team has been so disciplined, and that is the biggest thing. And, and they bought into all of this. And he says, well, some of these guys think, hey, maybe this gray-haired guy really knows what he's talking about after all. But the kid said, you know, he just comes with this swagger, this presence. You know what he stands for, and that has what has given them confidence, especially when they're behind in some games. Exactly right, Aaron, as the Sun Devils kick off. This is Ronald Johnson, the dangerous true freshman. Already one big return tonight. Johnson stopped at the 27. Erickson wears one of his two national championship rings from Miami. Has to wear that in the recruiting trail. Is this somebody who wears both of them? But that, that's kind of much. The, the toughest thing as a new coach coming in is getting people to buy into your way of doing things. And when you walk in with national championship rings, you have instant credibility, and the guys jump on board. And the, just Plus the, the fact that he's not, you know what, he's so confident. He's been there, done that, so it's not like his first rodeo, and he's trying to figure out how to handle it. Because they see the rings. Remember how young these current college players were when Dennis was winning national titles at Miami? They were like <laughs> six-year-olds. Booty fires wide. Dennis Erickson, of course, will take his fourth different program to a bowl. Three of them in the Pac-10. He's had two different since at Idaho. He was there. 2006, a couple of championships, 89 and 1991 at Miami. Twice in the NFL, Seattle and the 49ers sandwiched around. Briefs in at Oregon State, where he beat USC in OO and beat Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl, and 9 and 1 in his first season. Surprising even himself this year. It's Washington who's back in there. They fake it to him and fire short. And a good one on one tackle against Hazleton. Troy Nolan. That time wouldn't let him get away. So you make your adjustment physically as a player, right? And you start seeing things better, and you realize you got to bring your feet when you go to the tackle. Just the part that was missing early was the missed tackles and the extra yards after the catch. Nolan come up being sure of the tackle, creating an atmosphere in the state. And of course, being behind and coming back and tie this thing up 17-17 has a lot to do with the emotion. Nolan, a guy that's got five. Picks. He's taken two of them back for touchdowns this season. USC two for four on third down. They need ten yards here. Shotgun for Booty. Flips it short. In traffic. Incomplete. Incomplete. Hammered on the play was Ronald Johnson. Didn't quite have possession. Mike Nixon, a former baseball player, the 23-year-old, on the hit. USC guys in the last six snaps netting negative two yards for the Sun Devil defense. The pattern holds. Shaky early, and they come around. Craig Bray, defensive coordinator, said he, he panics a lot, but his teammates never, his players never panic. And Greg Wojnick, who was at ASU for a redshirt season in 04, punts it deep. It's dropped there by Kyle Williams, who falls on it at the 20. Nice punt by Wojnick in his homecoming game. So, Arizona State will get the football back to the 53-yard punt, 17 apiece. ESPN College Football Primetime, brought to you by Circuit City. For the hottest new technology, think Circuit City. And the new AT&T, your world delivered. That's our crew turkey ball. Team Flutie defeating Team James 7-5. Doug, you're undefeated in turkey bowls. That's ridiculous. I'm you retired. Got, there ought to be an asterisk down here. No. I had a big, I had a horse. We had a big group. You had speed, man. You guys had the physical receivers out there. 
Jones. Michael Jones showing his speed of the first time completion. Know your personnel, Tony. Know your personnel. No, you guys went to the pre draft You can't get to go. Turn the ball over and win. It just doesn't happen. Uh, man. And if you're going to talk as much trash as you and our producer Kim Belton do on the field, back it up, okay? That's a little message for you going forward the next year. Uh, well, you know what? Belton's a former <laughs> basketball guy, Stanford. We used the hype and our advantage. He was our T.O. Couple of key interceptions by James early in the game. Couple? Hole. What? Through at least two. No. One. Herring is two. Herring Tip is the ball. tailback on first down. And he's still trying to get Keegan free. It is very, very tough to run on USC tonight. Cedric Ellis helped out by Thomas Williams, the backup middle linebacker. They're being patient with the running game, but it hasn't paid off so far. Net one rushing yard of 13 plays, and that factors in one sack of Carpenter. We've got our colleague Bob Davey joining us from the field for a little expert analysis. He's out here for Thanksgiving. He's got a couple of kids who go to school at ASU, including his son Clay. He's a freshman on ASU's team. Here from Bob in a second. Second down pass from Carpenter, and he just throws it away. Nobody open. Bob, what do you see from field level in the early going? A lot of fireworks here at Thanksgiving. Well, Chris, I have to tell you one great story. You know, you had Charles Barkley on a little bit ago. As soon as he got off, he got a text message. I was standing next to him from Tiger Woods. Tiger told Charles to shut up so I can sit here and enjoy the game on the couch. <laughs> so I'm in pretty big-time company down here on the sidelines. I can promise you that. But without offending Tiger, who we appreciate he's looking in on the holiday, well, what have you seen so far? AFC, the pattern holds, getting the hole early and then climb out of it. You know, it looks to me like neither team can really run the football. Uh, USC certainly taking advantage of some soft zone coverage by Arizona State and throwing the football. Arizona State making a living throwing the football. Wow, Carpenter hammered and slid short of the first down. Ram Aloga hit him and it's a penalty. And the junior linebacker from USC, Carpenter's hat knocked off. Thank you. Thank well, you for throwing that. A through. couple of foolish penalties here against this defense at USC. Back to the play. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Number 58 on the defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So Carpenter hit the deck. It was going to be fourth down. Costly penalty. Yeah, my question is, if the helmet doesn't come off, will they call this penalty? Because we've seen this hit 100 times where they sort of let it go, saying, I oh, started to slide, he started to leave his feet. That's clearly, though, leading and going to a head to head, a blow to the head. Now, Cedric Ellis had one earlier on, a penalty that really allowed the offense to continue a drive. Then you get this penalty here. USC's got to settle down and play smart on defense. Miller in motion on first down. Still trying to run in game, a short game. For Harry, but Bob penalties like that, that's why I could never coach. I don't know how you have the patience to have that profession when mistakes like that are made. <laughs> well, Chris, you're right. And uh, two huge penalties by USC and then that kickoff return against them. And it's amazing just watching the body language here on this USC sideline. You know, when they first came out, it was like showtime. I mean, you had Charles Barkley, Marcus Allen. Players were kind of winking at them, shaking hands with them. All of a sudden, Arizona State has taken momentum of this football game so USC knows right now we're in for business right now momentum on ASU side Carpenter has the football he rolls out now pulls up and just throws it away he wasn't going to get away from big Lawrence Jackson and a prudent decision up out it it was 21-3 halftime for the Trojans who never lacked confidence in last year's meeting at the Coliseum so I think they felt like their big game edge was going to carry the night against an ASU team that hasn't been in very many big games. Well, Chris, and you know the other thing. You've been out to USC and you've watched them practice. You see how they go about business. They come in this stadium thinking there's 80,000 people here. Even though it's a Sun Devil home game, the Trojans think this crowd's here for them. I mean, they just love to perform in these big-time settings. But I think ASU's doing a great job in the fact that they cannot run the ball, but they're using that short passing game to gain some yards right here. There's a short pass on third and eight. Stopped short of the first down is Michael Jones. He was speeding on a crossing route, and Sharice Wright made a nice tackle. But what do you think about fourth and one here? Oh, you have to go for it right here. 
No question in my mind. I'm a fan. I've got two children that are <laughs> in say, Coach, I'm putting a lot of money into that university right now. You have to go for it, Dennis. But here's the, here's the dilemma here. They've had a couple of sneaks by the quarterback that have converted for first downs. This is too long of a sneak yard. You can't do that. They need to get up in there with a power game, ram it up in there with a fullback leading the way. So look at Clay Davey there. They do have Thomas Weber. This is within his range, but they are thinking first down with Dimitri Nance at the tailback. Do they dare try a middle run? But they've had no success. Nope, he's going to throw it. Pressure and sacked for the second time tonight. Lawrence Jackson, six and a half on the season, and the gamble doesn't pay off. But the receiver didn't get his head around. This is supposed to happen bang, bang, quick. Slot receiver to the left side did not turn his head, and the pressure got there. And then Carpenter has to hang on the ball, and he's made some great decisions in that drive, throwing the ball away when he didn't have anything there. He had an opportunity for and one. Looked to me like originally he was thinking about maybe sneaking it, but his stance kind of changed. It wasn't there. Went to the other play that they were running, and fourth down. Why not try to throw it somewhere on fourth down? Well, you, he, I don't think he knew the hit was coming, and he couldn't release the ball in time. His, his eyes were out to the left side of the field. The rush came from the right. All right. Hang on a second. Bob will take a break here. 7.05 until halftime. Trojans get the ball back. Tie game in Tempe. Arizona State ignored an opportunity for a long field goal, would have given him the lead. Throws a pass on fourth and one, and guys, it's just another byproduct of the inability to run the ball at all against USC with that one back attack. Yeah, you got to hit with something. Bob Davey and I were talking before during this break here. Bring a, a tight end, somebody to lead up in there. Trojans, after a couple of unsuccessful possessions, get the ball back, and they're thinking pass on the reverse. Desmond Reed fires downfield into traffic. Looking for Turner. Sun Devils not really fooled and recovering to make the play was Barrett, but that Troy Nolan. So Josh Barrett, healthy enough to return. Desmond Reed, the seldom used back. Well, what a great job, though, of Barrett, that free safety. Seeing the play the whole way, didn't let the receiver get behind him and come smoking from center field. The problem was that Turner came open a little too soon, and he had to carry the ball around the corner before he could throw the football. If he could have gotten rid of it a little sooner, would have had a completion if Turner had made the break a little later. Pretty good-looking throw, though, for a tailback. More than move. James like, but close. Washington, the ball carrier on second and ten. He's pretty falls down after the handoff. Picks up the back four. Now we've seen Doug running backs you know, throwing the ball. You want to be a tonight. quarterback? How's this? Today? Boom. Was that too late? Yeah, that was borderline. That was borderline, but I think they were committed to the hit. He did do a great job of throwing it, taking the lick, and putting the ball out there. Great throw on the move. My baby, what's the call here on third and six? I know you're a defensive guy, but what you do you know, call? I, I love the tight end, Fred Davis, and I love the play-action passing of USC. Even though it's third down, I'll try to find the tight end, number 83. He's on the right side of the formation, in the pattern, and he's got it. Good call, coach. And Fred Davis rumbling down near the 30-yard line. His third catch of the night. I'll tell you something you see just down here on field level. How big these wide receivers of USC are. They're bigger than the tight ends, Fred Davis. <laughs> well, what's really surprising is that Arizona State would allow Davis to come clean like he does off the line. Nobody responsible in the meetings this week. They wanted to bracket Davis all over the field. Never allow the former high school tailback to get that kind of space on third and short. They broke the tackle of Josh Barrett there. They are big guys. They, Turner, 6'5", Dave Osbury, 6'4". Hazleton 6'3", Davis is 6'4", and 250. Well, well, with ASU, you're only going to get a couple of coverages. You're going to get that zone quarters coverage, or you're going to get a couple of man-to-man -man situations. There they call them a man-to-man, run away from the defender across the field. There's a sideline warning, by the way. Washington and Havili, who goes in motion in the backfield on the first down. Well, he's got it. All to the middle. Turner. Inside the five and tackled at the three. He threw by Booty. He found Patrick Turner in coverage there. 
Precise throw. Great throw, just flattened him out a little bit over the middle of the field because he was wide open, made a safe throw to get the completion. But the key to this play was Turner being very patient with his route and turning the defender around. And I also thought the play action really allowed the protection to evolve in the backfield. And it brought the linebackers up where he didn't have to throw it over the linebacker. Completions for 26 and 29 yards. So the Trojans are first and goal. Washington stacked up. And Chris, you know, Doug talked about just a minute ago that Arizona State only plays really two coverages. And I think that is why, from an opposite point of view, why Arizona State plays so much faster this year on defense. There's no question that Dennis Erickson has simplified things for this Arizona State defense this year. But a team like USC can take advantage of that with their passing game. Second and goal, Booty rolls out. Flips it incomplete. Turner will cover. You know, and Turner got loose the last time they bunched up down here on the goal line. These receivers, when you bunch up, maybe Arizona State's figured out how they're going to come out of there and match them up. Well, they ran the same coverage that they got burned on the touchdown pass there, but the route wasn't a great route against that coverage. The route that works against this coverage where they set up a picket fence at the goal line is hard play action and guys slipping along the back part of the end zone. This picket fence along the goal line. Third down. They throw the fade. No good. Well, Bolden, there's that true freshman corner. He's 5'11", defending the 6'5", Patrick Turner. Good job. Well, we're out here right now tonight. We're trying to see which one of these two teams can carry on and go to the Rose Bowl. They're both highly rated. And making plays like that is what allows you to move forward. They have to come up with something like this goal line. Bob Baby had just been saying they're waiting for an opportunity to take advantage of Bolden, as so many opponents have. He was up to the task, and now it's David Bueller from 20 yards. USC retakes the lead, 20 to 17. Bob, happy Thanksgiving. Appreciate your insight from the sidelines. Chris, thank you guys. Enjoy the rest of the game. And keep an eye on Clay Davey in the future for Arizona State. 2017, Trojans back on top. They've made a rule here, no turkey fryers in the parking lot outside Sun Double Stadium. And you guys were saying that that's a prudent decision, very dangerous thing to fry up a turkey. I didn't know about all this Well, stuff. when you get hungry, sometimes you're antsy, right? And you put too much grease in the old pot. And yeah. when you put the big turkey in the pot, you got grease that comes over the side, and it's an immediate fire hazard. Right? Grease fires are amazingly tough. Yeah, I got introduced to that by Drew Brees out in San Diego. When we were out in San Diego, we did a couple deep fries. Almost had a couple did accidents. Did he fry or did you fry? He fried. I did. At our, well, my, my wife and I at our house did, and you know, right away, like you said, filled the pot a little too full, and I started to dip it slowly, and it looked like it was going to overflow. I pulled it out, got some of that grease out of there. All right. Is it, is it worth the it's trouble? Dangerous. Is it, it tasty? Yeah. Oh, it's, it's great. It locks in all the juices, and it's a lot quicker. Whistle before the kickoff here. Now they'll throw a flag. Let me sort this out. No penalties for Arizona State tonight. Delay a game. <laughs> there you go. Kick go off. ahead. Five yard penalty. You don't see that. Free kick. You're going to be kidding me. Are you <laughs> kidding me? All right, while we're on that here, while we're a little offbeat, yeah. let's stick with the Turkey Day stuff. A mm. couple of Thanksgiving facts for you. Right. 1621, first Thanksgiving. So, wow, that's, 670 hey, that, that, million pounds of turkey. 675. So, Six, did I say something? Yeah. Turkey, Texas. I don't know where that Turkey, Texas. Maybe out west. This, by the way, is the first Turkey Day game for Arizona State. USC way, way, way back before his time. Used to play a lot of games on Thanksgiving. The last was in 1938. Once in a while, they play UCLA on Thanksgiving. Like 30 some times they've yeah. played, right? And they haven't since 1938? Yeah, so it's kind of an old tradition. Appreciate the Pac-10 making this game and putting us out here for the holiday, right? Well, both these teams needed this type of atmosphere to showcase their talents nationally. Mueller, the ugly-looking kickoff, it's fielded down there by Burgess. And Burgess slams on the brakes, slips, and a flag comes in on the return. 
And he's breaking free. Never did get brought down. Now he's slung out of bounds. Is that going to be another flag? Should be. Well, it's not. Sharif's right on the stop. And now we'll check what the flag was early in the return. 32 yards on that return. And this is the first penalty of the night against the Sun Devils. What are you guys doing over here? <laughs> well, we're talking about the length of the flag. That right. was a it was long a heck of a call. throw. We can say it. We got Mike's on. We can say it. Number 22 on the return team. <laughs> we're really like a Panama game over here. <laughs> I know. I got arms and waves. waves. A, what's it called? A charade? Charade? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. That'll give uh, Sun Devil some poor field position. Yeah. To start Here's a guy that I bet has had a, a fried turkey in his day. Reese Davis in the studio. <laughs> All kinds of turkey. Love the turkey. Love to eat the turkey, Chris. Uh, plenty of uh, turkey going on for the Jets because they couldn't get anything done against the Cowboys. Tony Romo set a Dallas single-season record, or tied one, rather, with his 29th touchdown pass. They're 10-1 after beating up on the Jets. Packers beat the Lions. Favre completed 20 in a row. That's a team record. Sports Center after the game. Stay pretty at the end. Uh, Reese, thank you. Making a catch in traffic is Harry. Shoved out of bounds aggressively there by Everson Griffin. And that's what we were talking about on the last play on the far sideline on the kickoff return. It was a little slingshot of a throw into the bench area. Could have could have caused a penalty. Here, out of bounds, a little shoved late. Well, at this point here in the football game, penalties only won by Arizona State for 10 yards. They're five against USC right now. USC just got to play smarter ball. Completion, second and ten. Far side. High catch in a very short game. And it's Kyle Williams. 27th catch of the season. Great one-handed stab there because if that ball gets by him, the corner carry Harris saw the ball thrown and broke on him on the outside. That might have been going the other way. Well, right now it's just a glaring obvious that both of these teams are lacking a running game. And so you've got a bunched up line of scrimmage. Defense is kind of inviting the throw. USC will bring pressure likely on third and six. Set number three, Lawrence Jackson just storming in. This time, no celebration from the Trojans after their third sack of the night and the 46th allowed by ASU this season. And, you know, Jackson's one of those guys. He's on the outside line of scrimmage. You're going to see him work his way back to the inside for the sack. And this is one of those you got to get rid of the football. And that's happened time and time again this season. You get in third and long. The rush pins their ears back. He did have an in route coming open, but did not have the time to get it there. Where were to put it? Standing at the 50-yard line, USC up by three. Now about two and a half minutes to work with before halftime. And McKnight with a flag down again. Stop at the 44. 40-yard punt. Six yards on the return. Illegal block will push USC back on its side of the field. Illegal block in the back. Number 48 on the return team. 10-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, Matthew Jordan. Well, we'll check our Applebee's weekend menu. Rivalries all over the place. Crucial game for number one LSU. You guys see any problems there against McFadden and company tomorrow afternoon in Baton Rouge? I, I think McFadden and Felix Jones and company can score and, and run the ball. Yes, I think this is a challenge. And it's time to get that kind of speed in the backfield. They're a dangerous opponent. John C. Washington picking his way up the middle across his midfield. Gains about seven on first down. But, but those other two games there, you know, we talk about potential playoff systems and all. It's already a little mini playoff, both in the Big East and the Big 12 North, to go play the championship game in the Big 12. And it's already set up as playoffs. I spoke with Rich Rodriguez today, West Virginia, and he was excited about this weekend. They've had a good weekend of practice and focus. He says UConn's really a solid team, doesn't make mistakes, have to play error free. 
formation. Washington gets the handoff, and USC a couple of running plays here as we move inside in two minutes before halftime. Coming up at halftime, the Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. Let's check back with Reese. All right, Chris, we'll show you how the Packers and the Cowboys got set for their showdown coming up one week from today. And also, rock, chalk, pep, talk, hear, loo. Woo! We will deliver the pep talk to the Jayhawks when we come back. That was very impressive. It's a champ. Most often heard in basketball. Now football is... Slicing into the secondary is Hazelton. Quick throw from Booty, and they get the first down on third and short. Set up inside the 35 now. A minute 10 to go before halftime. You, you saw number 79, Sam Baker, going to the locker room. That's not good. This is a team that needed their All-American up front. Didn't want to lose him. So now Butch Lewis, who's a good player, 68, steps in at left tackle and has to fill another hole in the void. They felt that... Baker's health is one of the key issues tonight against Dexter Davis, the quick pass rusher for the Sun Devils. Blanchett. Moody, looking deep, down the middle. Has a man. And crossing the goal line is... Nope, Ronald Johnson not going to give him a touchdown. It was freshman on freshman as Johnson beat Bolden. I thought he'd score it. What a double move he put on the corner, Bolden. He, he set his feet. He gave a move to the outside, put his foot in the ground. Just a great route, left him in the dust. I, it, but it looks like he crosses the goal line. You know, I'm not so certain that he didn't, he didn't cross it. Maybe his leg was down, but where was the ball when the knee hit? That's the, key the, knee, the knee goes down, but where is the ball? Need down there. Hard to tell. Probably a good call. May not have crossed the plane. You know, spotted at the one yard. But a great play action pass. The prior play is under review. I'm going to take a look at it. But how smart, how smart is Steve Sarkeesian, offensive coordinator? He knows he's lost Sam Baker's left tackle. You've got Dexter Davis over there who's outstanding, and they roll away with play action to make sure that they've got enough time to throw the ball. And they did pick on Bolden, that, that freshman, with another freshman. And again, it's tough to overturn the call on the field from the angles we've seen. The thing that made this play, though, was his, his patience on the move he made to create separation. You know, he's, we still have 38 seconds on the clock, so whether he's in the end zone or not, USC is going to have plenty of opportunity to get this into the end zone. We thought that Ronald Johnson might have a big night. He had the kickoff return early in the game. Only four catches for 62 yards and a touchdown coming in. But Johnson, one of those guys... Starting to get it. You know, you see this often with freshmen. They have all the natural ability in the world, but they start to get the offense as the season goes on. And you, you have to put the stat sheet aside because you know they're capable of being a much bigger part of the, the offense. Particularly when that's a former high school quarterback. Yep. So he's got to learn the route running. He's got to really learn the disciplines of it. But I'd say at this point in the season, he's really coming along doing a nice job. You know, Sarkeesian said, we know this is not vintage SC. And I said, well, what are the, what are the keys to, to getting back to the kind of explosive playmaking? He said, number eight, Johnson, and Joe McKnight, number four. Getting those guys in the fold because they've got all the ability. Once they learn a little all, bit more, all the, all the coaches use the same phrase though. The light comes on, and it's somewhere along that midpoint to three quarters of the way through the season. Here, I don't, I don't think he got in the end zone. I think they'll leave it where it is and have to punch it in. But you can already see this USC offense that used to be vertical really went into a box and a shell, especially when Sanchez, Mark Sanchez, was filling in for Booty. Now they're starting to push the ball up the field a little bit more. You know, guys, they had an average coming into this game of only 10 and a half yards per completion. That's in the bottom 25% nationally, which is pretty stunning. Only 26 passes all year went for 20 or more yards, a very, very low number. I mean, you talk back in their, their vintage years, 05, 04, they had two times that number. But you got to remember, your quarterback's been banged up. Ch Sanchez was in for a while. Patrick Turner had a burner in his shoulder and was in and out. Well, I understand and why. Just, you know, it just <laughs> hasn't been. The rolling on the field stands. Timer, please reset the game clock to 49 seconds. The, the, the skilled guys are there. I mean, they're there and waiting to happen. It's just a matter of getting them all healthy on the field at the same time. Tonight, Carroll's team, 13 and a half yards completion. That's a healthy average, and they're set up at first and goal with 49 seconds before halftime. Really in front of Chuck. 
NC Washington. And the mental mistake on the left side of that offensive line. Now how big was that call in the last half a yard? <laughs> it's Jeff Byers, the guard. Ball start. Number 53 on the offense. Five yard down. He's a junior, very experienced. A smile from Byers. He's known as a, a heady guy, and he's smacking his own head for that minute. Well, see, remember a few weeks ago, Owen Schmidt, the fullback of West Virginia, he took his helmet off and pounded his head. This guy here is a little bit smarter than that. But how, how important is it to know the snap count, short yardage, and goal line? We used to always go on two or something where we knew consistently what it was going to be. See if it changes the play call. We have a couple of timeouts, but now inside of 30 seconds, clock running. Hazelton in motion. Now they hand it to Washington, who barrels ahead, does not get in. Stopped short now, and with 15 seconds before halftime, USC will have to burn a timeout here. Interesting call. I, I guess they had a couple of timeouts and felt comfortable running it. So, second and goal, the ball inside the one after a quick break here in Tempe. USC still one more timeout and 15 seconds to work with. The ball about a foot and a half from the goal line. John C. Washington, the setback, but Booney takes it himself. No signal yet. Booney laying in the end zone. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you still no signal? We got a conference here. Touchdown, finally, fellas. Half his body was across the goal line there. Would you say, though, they were methodical? <laughs> okay, but what's the difference between when they signaled the touchdown to two or three seconds before? What, all of a sudden they knew he was in? Well, they, they had no idea there. where he was. Gotta get up there and find this the guy right here knows he's in the end zone. That's call not it. his call. You can't I don't. step on there. somebody else's call. Oh, come on. Is it you no else is put their arms up. Put your business. arms up. Mind your business, man. But he was saying, I knew I was in. Oh. Euler for the conversion in USC. Apparently will take a 10-point lead to the locker room. It was 21-3 a year ago in the Coliseum over ASU. Sun Devils eventually rallied to tie that game at 21. And Arizona State and Carpenter will get the football to begin the second half. Again, one more time. They're going to be down at halftime for the seventh time this but, season. But down in a different way. I mean, I think they've been in this game. They, they had, they had, they really withstood the barrage early on of no offense, no snaps. I think USC had 22 snaps offensively before Arizona State ever took, took the field off. So, though, they will have the confidence from having to come back time and time again. They were at a 14-zip hole against Colorado. Turned that game around completely. They look to be done against Oregon State. This game here, those guys say, was the key to the season. 19 points down against a pretty good defense for Oregon State. Rallied there. And then Cal, this was another landmark win on this field. See, they got, they got to, they're like Rocky. They got to go out and get bloodied up early and let the guy hit them get mad and get comfortable with the game. Actually, my real philosophy on that is once they get behind, the pressure's off. It's time to just play football. I think in this one here, when you, really, when you look at this game and where the adjustment was made, whether it was Rocky Balboa or whatever, they figured out how to tackle and there weren't yards after a catch by USC receivers. I think you, you just relax all of a sudden and it's time to just go play. You know you got to do something. Mueller with a short boot. Roll out of bounds with nine seconds to go in the half. So that draws another flag on USC. Now, like Rocky Balboa, he usually came back and won. Uh, Arizona State has usually come back and won the hole they could not climb out of. The receiving team has elected to take the ball to the 35-yard line, first down. It was at Oregon. They were down 21-3 early, but the Ducks' offense was unstoppable. Sun Devils showed some heart, came back, got close, made it respectable. Actually, were in the game in the fourth quarter, but they, they couldn't pull off the escape in that and, afternoon. And, and Dennis Dixon, Dennis Erickson made the point about playing teams and how all injuries have impact. And you never know who you play at that particular time in the season. When Dixon was playing with Oregon, you're not coming back against the Oregon Ducks. You know? They couldn't get enough service breaks of the Oregon offense no. to, to eventually to come back in that game. Like, like, like us in the flag football game today. I couldn't get that one <laughs> service break to come back and beat you guys. Even yeah. though y'all stacked the team uh, with yeah. lots of speed. Let it go, James. Let it go. Let it go. Uh, I can't wait on next turkey day. 
hand it off, and Herring is a symbolic of the first half. Arizona State will go to the locker room, negative rushing yards, and not just because Carpenter's been sacked three times. They've got nothing going on the ground. And Aaron Andrews is with Dennis Erickson. Well, Coach, after a slow start for your defense, you look to have made an adjustment, but how did USC counter on that last drive? Well, I mean, they just came back, made some plays in the passing game, and uh, uh, yeah, we're not playing very well on defense. Offensively, we got down there and didn't, make, yeah, we didn't get any, you know, got three points instead of seven, but you know, we're still in the game. We'll see what happens. Coming back from being down is nothing new to this team. What's the message here at halftime? Just keep battling. That's all we can do. Thank you, Chris. USC more than a 2-1 edge in yardage. We'll see if the Sun Devils can rally one more time with the Rose Bowl on the line. Back to Reese, Mark, and Lou. Pontiac Performance Halftime Report. On first and goal, Woody has it fires all the way to the middle. Wide open for a touchdown to the Val Hazelton. Burgess had the two. Burgess in space. Did the setback, and Booney takes it himself. See your touchdown, finally, fellas. And USC jumped down to a 17 7 lead. Sun Devils tied it at 17 and a chance to go ahead. They got stopped on fourth down, and, and the Trojans run off the last 10 points of the half and lead it 27 to 17. Chris Fowler, Doug Flutie, and Greg Tech back with you once again. Happy Thanksgiving from Tempe. Great first half for John David Moody and that USC offense. 269 total yards. Just efficient. The play action, big plays. It started out with the hit screens and all that, the play actions and down the field. They have to minimize their penalties. Though. Well, your Home Depot coaching adjustments, though, really have to be one where if you're Arizona State, the running game's not there. And in my mind, it's going to be hard to really force that issue. I don't see an opening there. So the underneath game, the screens, the draws, take advantage of that very aggressive, very aggressive USC defensive line. And if you're USC, you know what? Bring on the heat. Keep coming after them. Keep pushing the pocket and play smart like right there. That was that was an unsportsmanlike conduct right there. B. Carroll driving him crazy. If you want to get to the Rose Bowl, you got to play smart. And Arizona State came in tonight, the biggest ball game here in a long time, controlling its Rose Bowl destiny, needing a win here, and a win a week from Saturday against Arizona to get to Pasadena for the first time in a decade. Comebacks have been the story of 07 for Dennis Erickson's team. The seventh time they've been down at the break, but not all those times have been against a team as talented as USC. I, I got to tell you, the vibes I have about four Arizona State right now, they, they have to come out firing and be strong, or USC's going to take them and get after it. They're in the same position they were early in the game where they got down early. I think they got to be happy that they're only down 10 with the way things went, but they played good football. You think football. Coach Erickson would say that? <laughs> to, to where he was well, at the very beginning of this game? Yeah, could be. Able to kick it off. It's a short kickoff. Taken by Burgess. And it's run down from behind at the 27. Arizona State. Now from Burgess's kickoff return. That's why they're in this game, despite only 132 total yards and negative 10 on the ground. They're Keegan Herring guys, nine carries, just two yards. That helps here. You, you know you, what? Here's your penalties, though. That, that's seven penalties. That's not good. You tell Erickson he's got minus 10 yards rushing, and he's only down by 10. I think he'd take that. Well, but, but the flip side of that, USC only has 42 yards rushing. They're not running the ball. And that's what I think is going to happen. USC's going to come out and try to pound them. And they've been able to generate something on their first drive of the second half of the Sun Devils. Play action. Carpenter gets out. He gets hammered. And once again, Carpenter loses his helmet. It's slow to get up as Lawrence Jackson beats his man and comes up with his third sack tonight. It, it was play action. He had Michael Jones running a go route and wanted to take a shot. And the ball's got to go. Mm -hmm. I know the pressure got there relatively quick, but the ball has got to go on that one. He almost lost the football. They're very, very fortunate not to have lost that football. But you know what? They, they've worked on it. They've coached him. Rich Olson says sometimes got a little blood there on the lip. He can, he can deal with that. Maybe even a tooth. He's a tough guy. I like him. He's sacked more than anybody in the country. 47 sacks. And here comes Danny Sullivan. 
a sophomore, like Carpenter, a Californian from Los Gatos. Very, very limited action for this guy. He's only thrown 14 passes this season. Mostly he's done that. Hand the ball off. And now Jackson imposing himself as a run stopper. He's eaten up the offensive line. And you know what? This is just one of those things where you have to sometimes accept. They're not going to let you run the football, Doug. And yet if you can't run it, you got to find another way to get rid of it. So in run situations, stay with more play action in those situations. And when you're passing, throw the quick rhythm stuff. Jackson was excited about playing ASU because he knew they gave up a lot of sacks. They hold the ball a little bit. And he was going to have a chance to have some plays today. He's having a big night, and he's really excited and we'll see what they do on third and 16 with the backup quarterback Sullivan it's a screen complete Ness very short gain and the Sun Devils come up empty three and out on their first possession as Rudy Carpenter has that bloody lip worked on in the first half USC really had the opportunity to have good field position their own 37 was the average starting field position whereas Arizona State had it back at their 22 to start and again here you're going to start off in the second half with USC getting good field position Thomas Weber had some key booming punts against UCLA in the last game needs a big one here Joe McKnight dangerous true freshman returner has some grass to work with USC, as they so often did in the first half, will have very good field position trying to add to their 10-point lead. They'll spot it at the 45. Only 31 yards on that punt. Weber unable to deliver. It's a huge opportunity. Uh, ASU has to come up on defense because you can't get any further behind against this USC team. The defense that you know, did stop the run. The Trojans had just 42 on the ground in the first half, but Booty spread the ball around brilliantly. Davis, the tight end in motion. Pump fake from Booty. It's back over the middle. Low throw. Davis thinks he's got it. And he'll spot it inside the 35-yard line. He beat Troy Nolan. No help in the middle of the field there. You know what? When you lose that safety in the middle of the field, they're lucky this wasn't a bigger play against them than that. Yeah. It was because of the pump fake. He pumped out to the right, moved the safety that way, had one-on-one -on -one with his tight end, Davis. Put the ball in a safe spot, but you're right. If he makes a good, accurate throw, he's hitting them on the run. Fourth catch for the tight end, good for 20 yards. They take it to Washington. Booty looks over the middle. It's complete to the 20-yard line. It's Turner, Aaron. Chris, I had a chance to speak with USC offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian coming out of the locker room. He said, obviously, here in the second half, they look to run the football. 42 yards ain't going to cut it. That's what happened in the first half. But he told me his biggest concern, left tackle Sam Baker, who's been dealing with a torn hammy. They don't know if he's going to be able to go here in the second half. Athletic trainers said they're going to try to stretch him out over here on the sidelines. But it is iffy if he will get back into the game. He's their stud tackle. He's missed already three games this season. Booty on first down. Fires on a slant incomplete. He was looking for Hazleton. Omar Baldwin was picked on a bit in the first half in coverage. You know what, and Aaron, while you're down there, if, you, if you're on that side, I'd love to know what's going on with Rudy Carpenter. Actually, I am, Craig. Or Craig. Sorry, Craig. That's okay. I just looked over at him and I said, you good to go? Are you going to come back in? He gave me the thumbs up. They actually just looked to put that liquid skin over that cut on his lip. Stephon Johnson into the ball game. He's a blocker. He's uh, in traffic that Booty was at the feet of Johnson. He was being covered up by a couple of linemen. David Smith, the nose tackle defender. You know, Craig, there's a lot of shots that are going up the field that look like it's just straight man-to-man -man coverage without a safety. The safety got moved on the last play. There were a couple other instances. And that's this quarter's coverage where the tight end, once he gets upfield, is one-on-one -on -one with a strong safety. But in our meetings, it's surprising because Arizona State was not going to let out Fred Davis to be by himself at any point in the game. Bracketing was what he was going to hit. The trick there is to jam him coming off the ball and slow him down near the line of scrimmage. Third and ten, and the Sun Devils force a field goal attempt. Booty. 
fires for Turner. Number three. <laughs> Luis Vasquez off the edge. Pressuring Booty. Field goal attempt coming up. That's a cardinal sin on a fade route with a big receiver. The ball's got to land in bounds. At least give him an opportunity. Because of all the rules and the way they are, they favor the receiver. Give him a chance to make a catch or get an interference call. David Bueller was two for two in the first half. He's now 14 for 16 on the season. Three for three tonight. That went from 37 yards. Arizona State will get the football back, but now down by their biggest deficit, 13. USC to kick off, up 13 now. The Trojans jumped out early, answered the challenge of Arizona State. Now they've scored the last 13 points of the game. The defense starting to clamp down. Rudy Carpenter set to go back in there, bloody lip and all. Arizona State gets the ball back. Well, that's good news. This offense has to answer the call on this series here. Got to find a way to get the ball in the flats and over the middle and away from the pressure on the inside. Big night for John David Booty, by the way, 19 and 29. 262. A couple of touchdowns. Hasn't thrown an interception. to the back of the end zone, and he'll take a knee. A special guest on the phone remembers a big play for USC against Arizona State. There he is, number three, Keyshawn Johnson. Back in 95, this guy had a 1,400-yard receiving season. That's still the most ever for the USC receiver. Keyshawn, happy Thanksgiving. I know you're enjoying the ball game tonight. What you see from this passing game with the Trojans, huh? No, I, I am enjoying it, except in the first half, it seemed like everybody in the booth was pulling against us, although we were up. Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Keegan Herring finally finds just a sliver of daylight. Keisha, what is a persecution complex? The nation's been in love with USC for five years. There's a lot in the line for USC tonight. All those you know, Pac-10 titles, 11 win seasons. It, it seems like they've risen to the occasion of a big game so far, though. So, so far, I mean, I, I, I got a little nervous there at 17-17, but I figured we'd make some, some second-half adjustments, and, and we're a pretty good second-half football team. So I got the confidence that we'll take care of business and finish the way we know how. Crucial possession for Arizona State. Now down 13 and a completion for Burgess. He's across the 30 to the 32 for a first down. Picks up eight yards. Well, you know what? And that's one of the adjustments right there that Arizona State has to make. you got eight men right there up in the box. They're going to stuff the running game. you got to hit the quick slam. That was a quick release. One, two, three balls out. He still got hit. Keyshawn, you watch this SC team lack a lot of big plays on the edge. Have you been patient? Do you, do you expect it to return to old USC offense next year? I, I think, you know, we lost that game to Stanford, then we lost the game to Oregon. I think if, if things go our way, we'll find ourselves in a Rose Bowl, hopefully, and playing against Ohio State. But I think it's overall a young football team. we got some young tailbacks with, that'll have some experience on their belt as we go into next year. So, you know, Sanchez had an opportunity to play a little bit this year. So I think we'll have a really good team next year. The team is, is still good. We'll still hopefully get a BCS bid, and we'll see. So the completion right there, the big hit from Taylor Mays, but George with the catch moves the ball to the 45 of the UFC. And Arizona State trying to answer here. Miller in motion, and now a whistle. Company, no ill effects of the hits he's taken tonight, but that's been the thing all season long. He's a guy. False start. Number one on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains first down. And you got Michael Jones who can take a beating, Doug, and then continue to hang in there and throw with accuracy. Oh, he's tough. He's a fighter. He's done this all year, taking a lot of sacks. We said 43 coming into today. And this USC defense is fast off the ball. They're going to keep hitting them all night long, so he's got no choice. It's Clay Matthews, the linebacker, backup being worked on there. He's got a broken hand and a thumb, and now he's got a leg problem. First and 15, Burgess on the end around. Trojans waiting for him. No gain, and he's shoved 
out of bounds. <laughs> Aggressively there, Everson Griffin, the end, stayed at home. Well, they're trying to change and move the eyes of this USC defense. They're trying to get them where that USC defense is using their head, moving their head, and not their feet. So I applaud the moves. Keyshawn, you've seen Ronald Johnson, the freshman, make some plays tonight. Is he, in your mind, get, get the future of the receding position for your school? Well, I think there's a couple guys. You know, I, I think Hayes is, is a pretty good one. You know, the guy you just mentioned is a pretty good one. And then they have some other kids that's committed to coming in the SC. So the receiving core overall, I think, is going to be really good next year. Patrick Turner will have another year under his belt. You know, this is his first year starting, so he'll be the one veteran guy at that position. You see Johnson, the freshman, the question, of course, for SC's offense next season will be quarterback position. So he's been saying he thinks that Mark Sanchez will have the clear edge going into camp over Mitch Mustaine, who transfers from Arkansas and is running the scout team pretty well this year. And they also have a young quarterback that they feel like Aaron Court might be in that mix as well. Meantime, a crucial play for the Sun Devils, third and 11 from the 46. Dimitri Mance to the right of Carpenter in the shotgun. Rudy, pressure. Hit hard. Loses the football. Trojans have it. Carpenter once again hammered. Lawrence Jackson laying the wood. The fifth sack. Maluga as well. Wow. <laughs> they do bring the heat. And Dennis has seen a lot of this this season. That was the hardest hit of the night. Guy. Hardest hit of the night. Listen to it. Rudy, pressure. Hit Loses the football trip. And there's a fumble recovery. He's grabbing his head. He's grabbing his leg. He's already got the bloody lip, the bad thumb. And now USC's got the football at the 47. And again, USC continues to bring blitzes from every direction. They brought two off the strong side there. They're going to be in his face all night if he returns. Lawrence Jackson making a case for an All-American and making some money tonight for his future as a senior. Four sacks. For Jackson. Keyshawn, in your era, they had some, some great guys on defense as well, but Lawrence Jackson belongs in, in that group, I think. Yeah, and, and the thing that, you know, he's able to do is get pressure with Ellis in that defense. The linebacking core is solid. The secondary is solid. I think we're a little weak at the cornerback position, but we got two hard-hitting safeties that will scare the lights out of you in the secondary. So if they can continue to hold down the secondary, they'll get the pass rush all night long. I just want to see him play against Ohio State. That's really what I want to see. I want to see that Big Ten type football against this speedy pack 10. All right, that could be a heck of a Rose Bowl matchup. Stephon Johnson in the ball game. Keishan, happy Thanksgiving. We appreciate your time, and we'll try to be as, as unbiased as we can. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys as well. Yeah. When, right, a real, right, when a real, real, real bias guy tells you he thinks you're going the other way, you yeah. can't take it too seriously. Well, I, I was trying to compute. <laughs> I couldn't get there. Well, he was saying we got a little East Coast bias going because he feels we're rooting for ASU. How far are you starting? <laughs> fans, guys, as you know, always feel like you're pulling for the other side. So, hey, this USA team is very talented. They finally have an opportunity to get most of that talent healthy. And second and 13. Washington back in the game. Incomplete. They fire. Are they rolling? There's some hesitation. Now they're saying complete. Troy Nolan scooped up the ball and there was hesitation from this crew. Whether or not that was a backwards pass. Ronald Johnson was the intended receiver, they say, incomplete. Yeah, Cappy Anderson, the line judge, come running from the USC sideline where he had the good vision. Down here at the bottom of our screen, the line judge has a good... Wow, I'm not sure. Tough to tell. It's huh? kind of feel level. Not where the ball... From where the release was. If it's thrown backwards. It was very, Woo! very close. Very, very close. The official on the near side of the field was unsure, so he let the play go. The linesman on the far side decided yeah. no. This guy down here. Yeah, yeah, from the opposite side. Nolan did the smart thing grabbing it. He's had two touchdowns already this season. Interception returns, and Erickson, angry that play wasn't reviewed. Booty flips it off to McKnight. McKnight has blocks. McKnight. For the 25. 
Starting with the last play, you can't review it because the whistle blew right. and the play will be blown dead. Right. And, and that last play, while they're all out there belly aching about not getting a review on the deal here, they become, uh, USC comes out and nails them on a big play. But the ball out of the backfield, McKnight, here's your dilemma. you got to go downfield and cover the tight end. You also have to have a linebacker from the inside to get out on McKnight. Not enough speed. Radovic got out in front to a great block up the field for him. So the Trojans not much with the running game, but that's like a running play and a huge pickup. And now Washington lowers the head and barrels to the 15. Check it, it's Johnson who spells Chauncey. 210 pounds sophomore. He's had some big games and some injury problems this year. Pesky foot injury. Still not 100%, but joining the tailback by committee, Doug. Every time he gets out there and runs on it, it swells back up, and it's been an issue with him, and he can't, can't get rid of it. Got nine there. He's got it again. This time, Johnson stopped for a loss. Chair by Dane Guthrie. Well, you don't cry a bucket of tears for Pete Carroll because he's got about eight or nine, <laughs> still eight or nine high school All-American running backs that, that he can choose from. That's, you know, we were talking last year about the receiver position and how guys get banged up, someone else steps in. and Maybe this year they're not quite as deep at receiver because they have the younger guys playing now, but boy, they've got talent. They're just open a new can of whatever you want, quarterbacks, running backs, receivers. I don't care who you are. You lose Wayne Jarrett and Steve Smith, you don't recover instantly the next season. Third and two. Chauncey Washington behind Nabili, and now a whistle. The Trojans will spend a timeout. Timeout. USC. That's their first charge timeout. It's Charles Barkley and Marcus Allen hold court. Send double defense trying to make a stand. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dodge. Live life to the fullest. Dodge. Grab life. And ESPN Game Plan. On Saturday, catch two great matchups, Oregon at UCLA and Georgia at Georgia Tech. To order, call your pay-per-view provider. Arizona State on the ropes here, down by 13. Trojans trying to deliver another big blow on third and two from the Sun Devil 16-yard line. They fake it, and fire in the flat. Savili, the fullback, makes the catch, and dives out at the 10, first down. I really like this guy. Avili is a fullback that a few weeks ago, you remember he was talking about how he picked up and he was kind of leading the, the group out of the backfield, making plays, the big run against Nebraska up the middle. He's a guy that's out of the backfield as a, as a receiver. He's a fullback, a runner. He's had two big receptions tonight for a crucial first down and a touchdown and a beautiful block after the catch downfield. John David Rudy has now reached 300 yards passing. First down just outside the 10. Hazelton comes in motion. Washington muscles ahead for three. Really do feel like you know, ASU you guys have been talking boxing. Charles Barkley's been talking boxing tonight. But this defense with Carpenter watching really has to kind of dig in. Because the Trojans have come out of the locker room well aware of ASU's comeback pension. They're throwing blows here. And you know, like we talked about it at halftime, you had a feeling that Arizona State was on the ropes. And the USC was about to go get a, a box of wood and some nails. <laughs> Start building that shed. That woodshed coming on out. Second and goal, Nabili in motion. And then Goody just chucks it away. There's no receiver in the area. Havili well covered that time in the corner of the end zone. And again, this is a USC football team that needs to win out, and then they need an Oregon loss. A little bit of help. Yeah. You know? So, you know, they've got a lot on the, on the line as well. Sure, but an Oregon loss looks very positive. Absolutely. They play, they play at UCLA. Brady Lee for quarterback. Dennis Dixon's career done, of course. And then they have Oregon State coming to Eugene. So, Trojans, you're right, do need some help. But realistic help. Definitely realistic. Sure. Of course, they would have to beat UCLA to pay back the Bruins for last year's loss. McKnight with Avili in the slot now. Booty. Fires to a wide open midnight for a touchdown. 
And USC does deliver another big blow and extends the lead to 19 with the PAT coming as Marcus Allen blocks. He, uh, Marcus Allen made a living coming out of the backfield just like that. McKnight, just a good football player. You know, you, the fans want to see him, they say, Steve Sarkeesian said to the offensive coordinator, everyone wants to see him run the football. Well, there's just as much power with the catch. Get that ball to him out in space, and he see, and Pete Carroll said, get him in space, teach him on third down to run good routes, and we convert. Three touchdown passes for John David Booty. The celebrity sideline loves it. This game being broadcast on ESPN HD, presented by Pioneer Kuro. First touchdown reception of the season for the freshman Joe McKnight. 20 straight points for USC. Now McKnight, like all freshmen at USC, you get baptized in a hurry. You come from high school, you're running around, you're the best athlete in the field. You get to practice, and you're getting hit by studs every day. And McKnight, they learn some toughness. Uh, you know what, and that's why they're so good. They feel like if they practice Monday through Thursday against each other, when they get to a game, they're, they've already been against better players. Beeler boots it deep. And Burgess watches it bounce out of the end zone. And now deep trouble for Carpenter in the Arizona State. How fast we check back with Reese Davis for a 30 at 30 FJ Reese. All right, Chris, couple NFL games this afternoon. Tony Romo and Dallas off to a 10 and 1 start. First time they've ever done that in the franchise story history. Finds T.O. there, 34-3. The final, the Cowboys get the Packers next. And Brett Favre at one point completed 20 consecutive passes. That's a team record. Easy win for the Pack over the Lions. Sports Center after the game. Stay current at ESPN News. Reese thanks Arizona State now trying to snap a streak of five straight empty possessions. Carpenter flips it short. This is Miller. And the tight end creates about a six-yard gain there. Stopped by Taylor Mays. Rudy Carpenter came into this football game getting hit, and nothing's changed. It's been the same Thanksgiving for him as it was the weeks before. That one there was 15 yards. Carpenter's a tough guy, but at some point, you have to have guys downfield that are able to get open and give him some outlets, right? You just don't have anywhere to go with it. Yeah, that's part of the issue and why he has to hold on to the ball so long and ends up taking those hits. And second and four, Carpenter scrambling now, fires downfield, and... And Gehe couldn't come up with it. Well defended by Kerry Harris. One of the many Sun Devils just taking a beating tonight. Yeah, he was actually receiver. He's up in the first <laughs> Rudy has a nice little touch on the ball there off the scramble, though. Laid it up nice and soft. Gave him an opportunity to make a play. He's, he's still not afraid to hang on that football and move around. There's been some hitting on Turkey Day. You can tell a lot at stake for both of these teams. Rose Bowl, namely, at the top of the list. You know, you know, there's 40 Californians on this roster. None of these guys have ever beaten SC. The losing streak goes back seven years. So they said that's enough motivation right there. We're still third and four. Completion for a first down to Nate Kimbrough, his first catch of the night. One of the, one of the rare times where USC doesn't blitz. Somebody, five or six coming, and when he got some time to throw the football, I guess he could find a receiver. Yeah, he thought he was going to have something quick to the left, didn't like it, backed up, moved around a little bit out to the right. Again, though, it's not happening in rhythm. It's not a rhythm passing that's going for him. And it, it, part of that is the receivers aren't getting open right away, like you were just saying. Jackson with four sacks tonight. Over at the bench now being looked at. A first down run. This is Dimitri Nance. Hard to earn three yards in the middle of this Trojan defense, which remember got gashed pretty good by Cal. And Pete Carroll, entire defensive staff, all the players embarrassed by the fact that Cal ran for 200 yards against them. Justin Moore sent went crazy. They're not used to that at SC. And he kind of he called out a few players too. You know, he did. All in this defense and some of the key players that had to step up. And Cedric Ellis and Malaga and these guys that are supposed to make plays that they didn't make plays with. It worked. They've stepped up tonight. Arizona State has done nothing on the ground. And Nance fighting.
heading forward for a couple. But it's really what they want to do, too. Arizona State will tell you, we're a running football team. And, and not being able to run is just, just, just disheartening. You know, Erickson has said that they're in you know, get behind and come back and says, once we catch up, we just start pounding the football on people. And that's what they like to do. And that's that's their signature. It has been their signature. And it's just not happening against USC. We're fighting to get back uh, to just plus yards in rushing. They've lost 31 on sacks. But even accounting for that, they've done nothing with the tailbacks. Third and four. Carpenter throws it into traffic. Incomplete. Wow. Looking for Kerry Taylor, the freshman, but Sharice Wright was right next to him. And it's fourth and four, and here comes the punt team. Pete Carroll said this is maybe the best secondary pass defensive coverage-wise that he's had. And so when you that's heaping a lot of praise because he's had some good secondaries. Well, there was finally an instance where Carpenter set his foot, let it go in rhythm, and of course the receiver wasn't open. Wright was right on him, made the play on the ball, and that's why he's been having to move around. Keisham was criticizing the corners. They brought a new punter in now. This is Jonathan Johnson, who was the punter at the beginning of the season. Lost the job to Weber. Weber had that shank earlier, so now Johnson takes a turn. And a fair catch made by Desmond Reed at the 28. So now USC will try to chew clock. 3.45 to play in the third quarter. And the Trojans up by 20. USC so far answering the challenge quite well, thank you, on Thanksgiving night. Heading to Arizona State with the Sun Devils sitting atop the Pac-10. Trying to figure out a way to come from 20 points down. And they've been a team that has made some breakthroughs. Yeah, they might need some divine intervention here. You know, it was not a very good big game team against Dirk Cutter. That's why he didn't keep his job. They lost their last nine games under Cutter against ranked teams. It was a total of 2-19 and 19 against ranked opponents here. And Arizona State consistently came up small in large games. So Defense. It's a penalty on the Sun Devils. Five-yard penalty. Remain first down. Obviously, 9-1 you know, with the one loss coming in a tough situation at Oregon. They've, they've played and won some big games this season. But still, Dennis Erickson knows there's something still to be taught to his team about how to step up and take on a team that's, that's better than you. And to observe how a team like USC has been able to withstand all of the adversity that they had to deal with this year. This is a very dangerous football team when they're healthy. And first and five, they throw it to Hazleton. Hazleton gets the corner and gets a first down out near the 44. Robert James, the tackler on this team, had to call his number a lot tonight. ESPNU All-State standings, the BCS standings, and of course, the collision in Kansas City, number two against number four, Saturday night on ABC. So the loser of that game is going to drop out. That's going to help Ohio State and West Virginia. Sun Devils, if they could somehow rally, would be in that conversation, but they got a lot of their mind besides the BCS at this point. Across midfield is Washington. No one on the stop. There's a lot of conversations. People, it's a great year that you can't really figure it out right now. I mean, it, there, there's so many games to be played that have meaning to them. You cannot assume anything this whole season. It's been that way. Uh, you know, speaking with Coach Rodriguez today, West Virginia. You know, and that's what he's told his team. Focus. They're in great position right now, West Virginia, and he's got a good team. And you know, mind your business and don't get caught up with everything that's going on around the country. Easier said than done. Yep. <laughs> Washington cuts it back and hammers down inside the 42. And now that Sun Devil defense beginning to be softened up a bit. Travis Gaithel on the stop. Tennessee going to Kentucky to play this week. We had Kentucky back uh, several weeks ago. Capable. Volunteers trying to close out that SEC East. Georgia needs a Kentucky win. Wildcats actually a slight favorite in that game. Talked about the Hokies and the Cavaliers in the ACC Coastal. Game in Morgantown in the Big East. 
By the way, the Big 12 South not yet clinched, and Sam Bradford, the quarterback who was knocked out against Texas Tech, has been cleared to play against Oklahoma State in that Bedlam series. That's certainly good news for Oklahoma fans. Midnight on the carry. Yeah, and a very, very tough game for Oklahoma coming up. There's no doubt about that. And so uh, having Bradford in the game means the world of them in their Absolutely. offense. Absolutely. He runs that offense so well. He's had a fantastic year. And when he went out, you can see the difference in that team. And they need a win. I mean, they need a win to get there. Texas is just sitting there chomping at the bit. Longhorns, of course, have the Aggies. The traditional day after Thanksgiving game tomorrow. One second down. As it's an emotion. They fake it to McKnight. Booty. Firing downfield, overthrown. Hazleton couldn't get there, covered by Troy Nolan. Good pressure from Dexter Davis off the edge, but that pass rush for the Sun Devils able to get to Booty just once tonight. You know what? Throughout this drive, though, USC has started to run the football, and they have created a physical nature tonight. Where ASU thought that's their second half MO, USC is doing it. He just missed the throw there. He had an open receiver in Hazleton. So third and eight. Trojans right in front of the Arizona State student section, which is not full because of the Thanksgiving holiday. A lot of the out-of-state students have gone home. Even though it's a sellout, it's not nearly as tough as it could be in that part of the stadium. This is McKnight, short of a first down at the 34. Robert James on the stop. You know, the guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and he has some grace about him with that. But he also lowers his shoulder and will get up inside. I'm not sure he's a 25 carry guy, but man, that's a that's a pretty strong runner inside. I thought it was a nice little call. That looked very well blocked and looked like he had an opportunity. And, and Pete said this with this team, he needs to go for it more often. He's going to go for it right now. Georges, 9 of 14 on fourth down this season. They need about two yards. Go for it. And complete. Davis running free. Still running free to the end zone. John David Booty. A hug from Steve Sarkeesian and Pete Carroll. Fourth touchdown pass of the night. And Fred Davis has six touchdown catches on the season. All right, Fowler, you're very good at this. They're, they, they take him behind the woodshed. Woodshed was built the last series. How about a guy that's 6'4", 250 pounds, former high school tailback, that has the ability to make plays like that? Boy, he's a tailback. They started him at receiver. They moved him to tight end. He's just making plays after the catch, making people miss, running over people. To, see, to have that kind of speed and that finesse at a tight end position is huge. USC has you want three tight ends in the NFL, and Fred Davis may soon join them. Five catches, 119 yards, and from 17 all guys, USC's run off 27 straight in the final minute of the third quarter. Pretty glum on that sideline. But look at the effort by the defense. You have to work so hard. You have to work so hard to come in and to stop the penetration of the running game. And Davis just excellently well done. Moves through traffic, gets to the flat. That's just a that's a heck of a ball player. Not exactly textbook tackling from Justin Try in the corner. That's what I, that, that looked like me trying to, I don't want to hit that guy. I do not want, you got that big body hey. coming down the field with momentum. Today in our flag football game, Fowler, you came across from free safety. You had, you had your eyes were wide open, dude. You were ready to, I thought, what well, you mean, you might hit me. Huh? I would have bounced off. I don't think we're allowed to hit in that game. Well, I, 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 I don't want to hit you, but it would have been unwise. Right, you guys, the rules a little, little messed up there. I saw him take some shots oh, well, jamming but, you going right. up the field. I did. No, you held me one time. I couldn't figure out why you didn't want to get across the field. <laughs> you almost got blown up in the Our field. And Fowler there. started going to the flats. Didn't want to curl around. Our defense looks about like Arizona State has lately. <laughs> There's another deep kickoff. Taylor knocks it out, and Arizona State, every time you get the ball back, in a deeper and deeper and deeper hole. And this one looking very grim for a team that will have to live with the fact that they came into this home game at 9-1, and one, controlling their destiny for the Rose Bowl. You know, and this just creates a situation where Carpenter has to throw the ball. USC can just tee off on the pass rush, and he's going to take more hits. I think uh, Ellis and Jackson, those guys are excited. Jackson back in the game. Pressure up the middle. Gets away from Ellis. 
Fires complete to Burgess across the 30. Cedric Ellis was <laughs> going after him again. Almost had him. You, you know what I'd say if I were the coach in Arizona State right now? Remember, we have another game. We've got to play our, our big rivalry game against Arizona coming up. Right. And you don't want to come out of here with your, your, your dirt, you know, your dauber in the dirt, and you have no momentum, and you're bummed out. You're what in the dirt? Your dauber in the dirt. You never heard that? You get your dauber in the dirt. I've heard of Joe Dirt. No, you get your dauber in the dirt, you, you're, you're down, you're out. Yes. Putting his dauber ahead and getting about four yards. But you guys are right. I mean, even if Arizona State loses this game and perhaps loses a chance to go to the Rose Bowl, they'd still be a BCS candidate. I mean, Arizona State... It's not going to travel a lot of people at Tempe because we're already here, but the Fiesta Bowl and well, the great staff of John Junker and company would certainly look at Arizona State at 10-2 and two if they can beat the Wildcats. So Mike Soups, who will bring a three-game winning streak up here to Tempe a week from Saturday. So 15 minutes to play. Pretty gloomy for the Sun Devil faithful as USC hammering for a 27 straight of 44-17. <laughs> well, the star power on the USC sideline seen enough local Charles Barkley I guess uh, he drove Marcus Allen to the game so even though Marcus might like to sit and, and savor an important USC victory you got to follow the big man to the parking lot <laughs> he's got to go get to my ride Charles got dessert in his mind or something tonight he said he already had one big fried turkey dinner second and seven Fires long throw complete and Gahe forced out the 45 first down. Arizona State coming into this game and only allowed in the second half all season long a grand total of 50 points. Trojans put 17 on the board in that third quarter. Sun Devils have been probably the nation's best fourth quarter team. Only allowed 12 points all year in the fourth quarter. One touchdown. Well, that's 1.2 a game in the fourth quarter. Problem is that they've only scored 68 all year in the fourth quarter. <laughs> they get a lot right here. Carpenter on the run one more time. Goes back across the floor and taking a huge hit from Thomas Williams is Burgess. Williams knocked Burgess into a teammate. Just a gutsy catch there for Burgess holding on to that ball. Who was the teammate? USC, the, the USC teammate, someone that took the blow. Yeah, it was the defensive lineman that spun back and started back down the field a little bit. Good Williams. job working back to the ball. Give me the ball, give me the ball. Ooh. <laughs> Second and short, Carpenter chased, throws it away, and that will draw a flag for intentional grounding. There's another flag coming in a second if he doesn't watch out. Look at my other backup linebacker on the pressure. There is no flag on the play. The play was legal by rule. The quarterback was out of the pocket, and the ball went beyond the line of scrimmage. There's some hesitation because they didn't know if the ball had actually gone beyond the line of scrimmage. But how about this? How about if he gets a personal foul after the fact, and then they pick up the flag? Well, I think Michael Batlin did a nice job, the referee, of recognizing the situation. You know he's frustrated. He understands. Those guys know what's going on out there. <laughs> what? Pete couldn't believe it. Hey, we're just getting to watch that temper. Yeah, you got to control it somewhere. Third and two. Carpenter. He could run for it, but he's going to throw downfield. He broke it up. And now flags come on. Michael Jones had a step. Terrell Thomas ran into him early. It's a flag in the backfield as well. A lot of laundry to sort out here. Did they hit Carpenter too late, or was that a hold back there? I, I was watching the ball down the field. Looks more like the holding area. And it will be a hold and a pass interference, and that will offset. 
Yeah, you can understand why they're holding at this point with that pass rush hammering Carpenter all night. Brandon Rod, 62, left tackle. Try to push him by your just a little long. I don't know if you call that one. Rudy looking for the big play off the scramble. Let one fly down the field. Had a chance. Couldn't get it out there soon enough, though. It was Kyle Moore. He's hampered by a hand injury. Did not start tonight. Comes in in a reserve with some fresh pass rushing legs. Long night for the big guys up front for Arizona State. Unable to run the ball. And Carpenter being hammered. That's Burgess in motion. And Nance hammered for a loss. What a statement being made tonight by USC's defensive front. Cedric Ellis is one of those players that's just a, a tough to deal with. You know, he's so powerful. His center of gravity is down there. He's got great vision. You know, break down. Don't run past the ball. Well, there's more than you can block. Both linebackers were blitzing up through the middle, so you're ended up one-on-one. -on -one. You have to come down and squeeze the gaps. Ellis ends up on block and in the backfield. Ellis, one of those true nose tackles. Great motor, great attitude, great ability. Punt will roll dead at the 18-yard line. Not the year for John David Booty that he had last year when he had monster stats. 3,300 yards and 29 touchdowns. He's been hampered by the finger injury this season, but tonight feels like 06. USC's last five possessions, field goal, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. 27 straight points for Booty and Company, and they take over at the 18. This is McKnight, reversing field. McKnight with Booty, thinking about making a block, and then just backing off, gets to the 30. <laughs> Good decision, big man. He's finally getting healthy. He's throwing the ball better. His fingers are healing up. Exactly. <laughs> it's not mix it up too much. You know what, though? When I'm watching McKnight run the football early in the season, you could just see that he was a young guy, that he really wasn't quite there. Uh, he's more fluid to me. Yeah, I see a guy that's got more wiggle, more vision. And he's smoother in his running. The guy for only 180 pounds, he feels you know, more physical than that. He's a strong 180. Freshman from River Ridge, Louisiana. Got 12 there, first hand of the 30. And now whistle. Get on the air with war on, on John David Booty. You really, he was efficient against Cal, Aaron, but he, he looks like his old self tonight. Absolutely. And, and Pete Carroll told us this week, guys, this was the best week of practice John David Booty has had since coming off that injured finger. Chris, you know, a lot of talk for USC and with Steve Sarkeesian and, and Pete Carroll, should they have taken him out of that Stanford game? John David Booty did not want to come out, even though he knew he had injured his finger. He had told his coaches, leave me in there, leave me in there. The coaches had told us they love that competitiveness, but they said four, you know, four interceptions, if they had to do it all over again, they would have taken him out. Aaron, it seems like no quarterback ever wants to come out. They always want to lie about the severity of their injury. It was Dennis Dixon's situation a week ago tonight. And the injury, a lot more serious than we thought. And then he let on and went out there in non-contact injuries. Don't you have to balance it out, Doug? I mean, you do, but you've been taught, if you can walk, you're playing. I mean, you're trying to play. And especially as a starting quarterback, you get all the reps. To go to a backup quarterback, you one, there's such a drop-off because he doesn't get the reps and, and doesn't yep. run the team the way you do, and you just feel the need to be out there. Booty wasn't out there. Trojans' second Pac-10 loss at Oregon. Sanchez quarterbacking that team up in Eugene, and the Ducks' defense did a good job shutting down SC. But he stayed the course for his team, really. He kept them together. He was glue. He maintained. And, you know, when you watch what's going on with some of these teams around the country and they lose quarterbacks and they fall apart, that's why I like Kansas so much. Last week, Myers comes in, number two quarterback, and Kansas kept rolling right along. So you've got, you know, Oregon fell apart. You know, that, that was just the way it was. It was over with last week. Yeah, but so many games in this conference in particular have been decided by you know, when you play a team, whether or not a key guy like the quarterback is healthy. This is Johnson. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. 
Rudy started the first five games, including that at Lost in Stanford, the game Aaron was talking about. It started well, it was with the touchdown, but then after the finger, was four picks after halftime. Shocking loss. Sanchez started the next three games, lost to Oregon. And then Booty returning from the injury. And again, didn't have to do a whole lot. They ran the ball very well against the Golden Bears up in Berkeley. Tonight, though, an aggressive game plan from the start. He came out fire. Remember, though, I thought going into the season, Booty was maybe the top Heisman candidate. You know, prior to his injury and, and, and some of his teammates as well. And your preseason number one team, which is why there's so much on the line for USC to be preseason number one. And then... Not even make it to a BCS Bowl would be, a, by USC standards, a humongous disappointment. Well, the finger he broke was his middle finger and the top knuckle on that finger, which is a real control finger for the ball, so it's going to fly on him. Now he's throwing the ball the way he used to. It's pretty much healthy, and they're off and running. They look like that Rose Bowl team. And the punt is blocked. Wodnick's punt is blocked. And Arizona State will take over at the 20-yard line. Reese Thompson there. And Arizona State special teams come up with the second big play of the evening. We're in a humongous hole here with 10.43 to play. You know what, this just here is pressure right up the middle. They still need 27 points, guys. 11 Time minutes. He's had a punt block this season. That's been a weakness for the special teams of Trojans. Carpenter and company 20 yards away. I, mean, I know they're in a deep hole. <laughs> we know well, they just want to get rid of the woodshed. <laughs> I don't think they can get rid of that wood shit. I think they put some uh, concrete pillars on the corners. They've had some comebacks. This one would be pretty monumental. Carpenter <laughs> fires complete over the middle. And ducking down near the first down marker is Kyle Williams. Again, it was a three-step quick rhythm pass, and, and Carpenter has to avoid a pass rush. <laughs> right, that kind of play is designed to neutralize the pass rush, and he's still feeling the knee, huh? Oh, just tell the O-line to cut. <laughs> just cut the guys down and let me throw one. Those guys over there with the white jerseys on have great hand technique, and you start going down low, they jump over you and smoke you in the face mask. This is Nance. Nance is off the tackle. And a fight for a first down. It's going to be just short outside the 10-yard line. You know, that would mess up your dauber if you're a quarterback. Your dauber. You know how many quarterbacks have had their dauber in the dirt? Uh, not me. I don't know what one is. So uh, I don't know if I got it. Do I have a dauber? You got a dauber. Okay. <laughs> take your word for it. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I don't know where I keep it. <laughs> Easy, fellas. Third down and short. Plans ahead, it'll be first and goal. What he's referring to is having your head down. Yeah, he's had his head knocked sideways. Yeah. Tonight, Carpenter, he's taking some Boy. big hits. Yeah, yeah, one thing he does not do is put his head, he's got his head up, he's getting in people's face still, trying to either motivate his guys or he's just that upset that he's going to have some fun and get out there. I was asking him yesterday, what's the hardest hit all year? It wasn't one of the many, many sacks. It was Al Afalaba with the safety of Oregon State came in a blitz and hammered him after he got the ball away. Carpenter chased again, hammered one more time, spun down back near the 17, a big loss. Alba combining with Everson Griffin. Sixth sack for the Trojans to just continue to show that quickness. Well, the speed up front of this USC defense against this offensive line and the backs right now, they're not getting the job done. And you know what, Arizona State, for next week, you think Mike Stoops, Mark Stoops, defensive coordinator of Arizona, yeah. you think they're not sitting home right now saying, all right, boys, we're coming with a little bit of that ourselves. Every team's done it. Every team sees the sack totals, watches on tape, and they bring the house when they come against the Sun Devils. And well, after this drive, I, think, I would think about getting Carpenter out of the game so he's healthy for next week. Here comes a corner. Now they flip it off short to Nance. Nance picks up some blocks, fights for the corner, and gets shoved out at the two. Kevin Ellison saved the touchdown. Great little call into the corner blitz there, Kurt. Yeah, you know what? They've, they've had a chance to see a lot of blitzes this year. 
Carpenter. Wow. <laughs> He's having trouble getting to his feet there. Boy, he is absolutely taking a pounding. But they're going to have to make an adjustment here. Next year, same thing. These teams are going to start it back up next season, see if you can defend the blitz. Well, they lose three graduate students on the offensive line, but all the other key guys on offense are back next year, including Carpenter, who's a junior. Third and goal. Two tight ends. Miller now comes in motion, and this is Nance walking in. That's the easiest two yards they've gained all night on the ground. And Arizona State cuts into this big lead. They waited about 52 minutes for a running play to look easy, and the block punt sets up the 20-yard touchdown drive. It's amazing what a little bit of confidence coming off the block punt will do, and all of a sudden they move the football. That's amazing when you're facing a defense that's up 20 cents. <laughs> but they're not, it's not like they're sitting back in a zone. They're still coming yeah, after you, so you got to make plays. Weber with the conversion. Carpenter battered and beaten. This is how I was hoping to score tonight. Just hand the ball off. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Applebee's. Together is good. And in part by Clean Exchange, the only electric shaver with a disposable head. Clean Exchange, new from Remington. Trojans still up by 20, trying for an eighth straight win over ASU and a force right here in Tempe before the game. Keith Rivers, who's banged up, had the mouth working, at least. That was healthy. I give you keys back after the game, but right now, it's our house. The only thing that matters is you defeating the one-on-one. -on -one. You defeat your guy every time. If you defeat your guy every time, everything else takes place. Come on, flying. Come on, bouncing. Give it up. Give it up. Let's go to work. They're going to work. Ken Norton Jr. there with a pep talk. Six sacks of Carpenter tonight. Deep kickoff, Desmond Reed will just run behind the end line. Well, I wonder if there was a pep talk like that over at Arizona State. You sure is, right? <laughs> Easy to play DB when that pass rush is in the quarterback's face. Yeah, <laughs> but you know the ball is going to get up early. They're going to throw it up there for grabs. You're going to have opportunities to cover, and you don't have to cover too long. Ellis and Jackson have just gotten after it tonight up front from USC. No surprise either, is it? Absolutely. It was kind of expected and planned by USC's defense to get after Parker in the pocket. Washington short game. And they were fired up talking about the fact that they're facing a pocket passer. You know, a guy that's going to be in there, hold the ball a little bit, and we're going to have a chance. You know what, Rivers was talking about the changing of the keys and all that stuff, or handing the keys back over. Yeah. You know what, there was a lot of talk about how this was one of those critical games for USC not to have the changing of the guard out in the Pac-10. You, know, you lose a couple of games, and all of a sudden people start questioning. And, and, and we talked about it throughout the middle of the season when that was going on with the injuries. And once they got guys healthy, they were going to be back. For all the talk and all the injuries and those two losses, including the shocker to Stanford, it looks like USC has its mindset on the Rose Bowl. They still need to help uh, from an Oregon loss. But check back with Reese Davis in the studio. Reese, what's up? Well, Chris, what's going on? Maybe George Mason back to that Final Four form. Okay, that's a little bit early, but they are giving Kansas State all kinds of trouble. Up by dozen in the second half on ESPN2, the standout freshman for K-State, Michael Beasley, with 24 at last check. George Mason, Jim Laranega trying to do it to K-State on the ESPN2. Now, Reese, this is Washington. Picking his way ahead on near the 35. Oh, well, hoops, you guys want to take this? The freshman leaders in points per game so far. Michael Beasley, part of Bill Self's recruiting class, is highly regarded. Big things expected at SC from OJ. The other OJ. The other <laughs> from SC. Second and five. He's looks in motion. He's a blocker. And Avili. Short game. 
Stanley have really affected that as a pass receiver where he's got a touchdown. He needed a good game, a little bounce back for him. He did. Dropping off a little towards the end of the year. He's got to feel good about himself after today. How about bounce backs? Let's look you know, some of the teams up on top. How about LSU, you know? Arkansas. Yeah. LSU's defense giving up big yards. But out in this part of the country, the focus becomes now the Oregon Ducks because the Sun Devils, unless they can pull off a huge miraculous rally here, will lose control of the destiny. And that will fall back to Oregon. Washington stepping through some tackles. First down out near the 45. Well, Chip Kelly's got a, a real monumental challenge to figure out how to get this Oregon offense on track with, with Leaf and quarterback, and Doug Dixon's gone. Brady Leaf, we talked about it last week, Doug. He's not quite fit for that offense, that zone read option. When he was recruited, it was more of a drop-back game, and it was a different style. And with Chip Kelly, it's that spread offense, Dennis Dixon running, wheeling, and dealing. And now you've recruited other players, too, that are into that spread, You know, whether it's receivers or your tailback that fit that mold. So they, he, Chip has a big challenge. The key thing in that game is that Ben Olsen, the UCLA quarterback, has practiced this week and could play for the Bruins, which would certainly help the cause of UCLA. They've had so many quarterback problems. Three different guys played that position for UCLA this season. Also, Rashawn, the most recent. They can get Olsen back there. And their defense, we watched them on tape the other day, yesterday. Yep. Really studied UCLA's defense. They get after you know, the they got, they got, They're aggressive. But it's just, there's something missing there. You know, it's just not happening. This is the problem with body penny. You get here, here. You're losing. And then it starts to peel. You got to go home with fade. It. Yeah. yeah. And you can't go anywhere but home. Where are you going to go out looking like that after the game? Well, with her on his right or his left. And you didn't bring a shirt. You look like hell. And you, you got to go home and, and rinse it off as Hazelton dances into the secondary. Still spinning forward. And now Hazelton he takes eight Sun Devils to finally get a whistle. He is an after-the-catch guy that's going to keep fighting and make people miss, and he, he thinks he's going to the house every time it's his ball. We didn't take, or well, I guess we could have, should have, we didn't keep track of the yards after catch tonight by USC. If we had done that, the number would be big. <laughs> oh, think of it. Early in the game, they threw a bunch of these hit screens. They threw that little dump on the short yardage play to, to Davis, tight end, who took off and ran over people to get to the end zone. A lot of yards after. I respect Hazelton. And there they are, comfortable by 20 points, and he's still fighting. That is symbolic of his, his attitude and work ethic. Here he fires it all over the middle. Turner grabs it inside the 30. Defended by Rodney Cox and John David Booty adding to a big night. He's now thrown for 375 as the Trojans approach 500 yards in total offense. That wasn't an easy throw. He's on the move. He looked to the little tight end of the flat one there. Looked at a comeback. Wasn't there. Waits for the crosser to come over there. And just a laser on the move. You think he made a little statement going on here that, that we're still the bad boys out there? Uh, definitely. And made a strong statement ever since it was 17 all. Second quarter. Washington. You can see Washington hammering ahead for about eight. So USC will be put in the unusual position of rooting strongly for their crosstown rivals from Westwood. You see if Ken Norton, they played at UCLA, and the Bruins can do USC a huge favor by putting them back in charge of the Rose Bowl race. Remember, Oregon defeated both Arizona State and USC. That's why the Ducks have once again control their destiny here. Yes. How about our stats guru and coach and referee and head official today of the flag game, Marty, comes up with yards after catch for USC. 200, 265 yards. Wait a minute, Marty. Marty, 500 yards of offense. Marty's Marty. the best in the business. Are you confident you. in that number? Marty, I love you, man. All except today. Hey, come well, here, Marty. Come here, Marty. Come here, Marty. Come on, okay. Marty, today, we throw a touchdown uh -oh. pass, a critical touchdown. Marty calls five Mississippi on me. Sacks. <laughs> you mean I got a sack? Sacks. You, you got sacks. You're a rookie. Next year, we get a <laughs> 
<laughs> Rookie quarterback. All right. I had no pressure on me, though. I got the Heisman guy, Mr. Uh, one Pass. He's a very good Mr. official. One, one he pass got a few. There. Marty, yeah, there you go. He's, he's, he's even a better stats guy. Awesome, oh. dude, man. <laughs> Made a great ruling on a phenomenal catch today. And since it really did touch the ground, he gave him at least half the distance anyway. That was a strange ruling. Third and one here. But, but how about the, the yards after the catch that Marty came up with? That's a, an enormous number. 265. Man, that's wow. that's the oh, one that will drive Dennis athletes. Erickson crazy, you know it? It's, I mean, that's one of those that, that, that to me, is effort. It's lack of effort in the Arizona State defense. It's great. It's great effort by USC. And Rudy Burgess gave him a spark early with that kickoff return for a touchdown that answered USC's opening score. But even a couple of big plays in the special teams, not nearly enough to offset the dominant performance up front by USC. It just talks of the athletes at the skill positions for USC or what they do after the catch. And they're big and tough to bring down. A startling number. And that, that is also, what do you think, to do with, with poor time? After the delay of game penalty, Washington not able to pick up the six-yard needed on third down. Well, here's a situation where you don't want to kick the field goal, so you're going to run the ball and go for it here. Do you run a pass play, which makes it look like you're piling on, or you just run the ball, run the ball. and concede? Dennis Erickson knows that there's, there's still a big talent gap between his program and USC. He's going to pound the recruiting trail. His early returns are pretty good, but he felt like this was a, a surprise season to be sitting there at 9-1 in first place in the league. He'll recruit, and the Sun Devils won't go away. They'll go on fourth and four. Hazelton in motion. Try to pick it up on the ground, and Washington will be stopped short. And Dennis is with his talk. I think he has 11 or 12 commitments right now for this next recruiting class, and he'll pick up another 12 or 13. He'll have a lot of momentum. He's got to find some linemen. They'll bring in some junior college guys. But almost the playmakers are back on offense. The Trojans could be headed back to the Rose Bowl. It's going to be a late night meal here. It's 9.30 local time. We're going to chat out this hour. James, you have another dinner plan when we get back to the hotel? We've got to eat something. We haven't eaten in a while. This is Nance. Craig's ready for round four. Nance taking the handoff from Danny Sullivan. And finally, some blessed relief for Rudy Carpenter. He'll try to regroup, and he'll have about nine days to get ready for a still important game, the rivalry game here against Arizona a week from Saturday as Sullivan gets a couple of meaningless plays at the end of this game. How about Arizona though, really stepping up big against Oregon last week. They've got momentum. Offense is coming around, yep. doing well with it. Defense plays fast. they got confidence too. And they're playing for bowl eligibility. Arizona at five and six. Not just a splitter in that game. They've got something to play for. You don't have any glass on the kid. That, that Oregon team that got beat last week sitting at home tonight listening to us talk about potential Rose Bowl for USC. They got some pride now. They're going to they're gonna roll over. They're, they're kind of tired right now hearing all about USC going to the Rose Bowl because they still have control. I know they thought we know We know their situation. But you're right. We know their situation with Dennis Dixon down. And they're going to roll over. You get a Rose Bowl ahead of you and you're two wins away. And you're playing... UCLA and Oregon State at home. There's a lot of belief in Eugene that they can regroup and, and go to Pasadena. John David Booty, our Wrangler player of the game, what a performance. 375 yards and four touchdowns. He has been sharp from the get-go and a hug from Pete Carroll there. Well, he ought to give his tight end and his, his receiver some hugs on their uh, uh, yards after catch. How about the defense for giving him the ball back? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Great effort by USC. The Sun Devils control their destiny no longer in the Pac-10. USC with a lot on the line. Sending a strong message tonight that uh, we're not done as a dynasty in the Pac-10. Well, Pete Carroll now 23-0 in the month of November. 44-24. The Trojans from 17-all reeled off 27 straight points. John David Booty shows that he is back from that finger injury. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Happy Thanksgiving for all of us here in Tempe, Arizona. Good night. Sports Center up next.